All right. And here we are. Welcome, everyone, to the much anticipated. Actually, it's not anticipated because I have genuinely not done any advertisement for this for some reason, because I kind of forgot uh, not about this game, but to advertise. So it's going to be us watching ourselves and then maybe some cool people on the YouTubes. So we'll catch this afterwards. But welcome, everyone, to a Dare Wolf Den or Dare Wolf Gaming 88 point redeem for run a one shot of your choice. Dare Wolf does have last rights to say no. And then you just lose your points because he's a real piece of crap. No, he'll just be like, no, I don't want to do that, but I'll do something different. But Bribery, the server mod guy, a.k.a. the best server mod in the Discord universe, he has been gracious enough to spend some points and allow me to stroke my own ego by running a game in in my homebrew setting known as the Roaring Shores. So very excited about that. I don't have it very flushed out, I'll fully admit. But what's really cool is that some of the uh, ideas that Zachary came up with have now become canon. Some of the ideas that Bribery came up with have now become canon. And a lot of these one shots, which I've only done two now, including this one, I'm going to hopefully do some more of these will help me flush out this setting so that eventually I can write a full player's guide and then maybe even release it to the, the masses out there. But with that being said, we're just going to go around the table, have everyone introduce themselves, tell us who their character is. I'm going to do a brief little intro to set the tone for this little short adventure. And then we're going to have an opening scene in a tavern as many, many adventures begin. So let's take it away. Let's go Drew, Symbol, Bri, Bri, and Zachary. Take it away, gentlemen. Hi, I'm Drew. I'm playing Zoltan. He is a dwarven uh, scholar bard. Um, he has studied the lore of his uh, father's uh and uses that to help his uh his uh teammates and whatnot be better in what they do doing the things that they do i like it i like it i like it i like it beautiful and i am symbol 24 i play twang the human ranger um being as I was uh, feeling 13 at the time of creating this character, uh, he's a uh, um, very uh, broody yet full of himself ranger. So with a dark and mysterious past. I like it. Why is it my name? I music? am Brian, and I am at Mind Over Brian on both Twitter and on Twitch, although on Twitch I spell it with a zero. And I am playing Farrand Bouldershade 3 Ash a human fighter from another country whose parents are mages. I like it. I like it. Good. Good. Is that battle music playing for you guys? Sure it is. is. Yeah, I can't hear anything. Maybe it's Chrome. I don't know. It's so weird. Uh, it is the weirdest thing. The yeah. absolute weirdest friggin' thing in the world. You know what? Let me try something. I'm going to do this. Yeah, we're, 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 we're doing it live, all right? So everyone just yeah. bear with me here. We're doing it live, <laughs> all right? So it is what it is. We're going we're gonna to make this work, all right? Super bear with me. So high grade over here. Oh, that's so weird. Is your it's tab so muted? so weird. Is my tab muted? No, my tab's not muted. Hold on. Okay. And the app is not. That is the Google. weirdest thing. Is Chrome muted? So it works in my incognito mode for Chrome, but it won't play in my not incognito mode for Chrome. So right, walk me through that if you want. So uh, that probably means you have an extension in your normal mode that is preventing the sound. That yeah. it's probably, but see, that's the thing. I, I deactivated my extension that is for, you know what? That's um, all right. Go. This is a workaround. No, no, no. This is a workaround because I've got two instances running. So when I click play over here, I can't hear it through that one, but I can hear it through the one that I'm using for everyone at home. So let's get, uh, let me do this. Hold on. Hold on. Super professional game master streamer here. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. Boom. Boom. It's right. working. Don't know what I did, but now it's playing on both of them. I don't know what I fixed. I literally turned off my extension, turned it back on. Everything's working perfectly. So, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. We got some soft, soft tavern hall music playing in the background. You'll love to see it. 
you love to see it. Umbral, I'm getting you immersed as best I can. As best <laughs> I can. So we're going to start off. It is session one. This is session one, uh, perhaps. Of, wait, of Zach more. didn't introduce was, himself. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Session one. No, Zach, you don't get to introduce yourself. <laughs> Continue, <laughs> Zachary. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rage quits. <laughs> Find a fourth now. <laughs> Find a fourth now, bitch. Oh. <laughs> It would take twice as long now. I'm kidding. Whatever, I'll play his character. <laughs> wow, that's sure. problem solved. Good luck figuring it out. <laughs> I don't know how it works either. It's fine. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so I am playing Halava of the Revelry. He is a um, a hobgoblin cleric monk. Uh, he's got like ruddy leathery skin, uh, red on the outside, beige on like the front and the stomach and all that. Um, he is very physically intimidating but he is actually just a you know kind honorable and passionate man uh you know just a man trying to figure out what life is supposed to be yeah. yeah 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 i like it i like it yeah so one of the um, cool things that zachary did is mm -hmm. he came up with the revelry uh which i think is a really cool idea so these like traveling group of you describe it zach this is your idea now it's become canon right. Uh, so the Reveille is kind of like, um, it, like you said, it's a walking, it's a roving group of just anything and everyone that can provide some sort of uh, society to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're healers, fighters, uh, crafters, things like that. Th think like hippies, but not like peace and love, man. Uh, but, you know, kind of peace and love, man. Uh, basically Maybe like doing, gypsies, do, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. Uh, like Rom Romani gypsy type of thing. Um, but they have a big like uh, focus on like uh, breaking what you fix, or if something's wrong, you fix it. Kind of yeah. like yeah. Um, so if something's attacking a town, they help. If the town got burned down, they fix it. You know, they're the don't good ask for Samaritans. Anything. Yeah, they're like they're like um, uh, the Peace Corps, but not yes. Some American. call them good Samaritans. I call them vigilantes, roaming around, sticking their noses. All different types of noses. They got old goblins, they got elves, they got dwarves. Yeah. They even got one of them goblins in there. Wait, goblins can't be play a character. Shut up there, wolf. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> also, <laughs> they're, they most likely just are fixing what they've already broken because they party too hard. They go into town, they party too hard, and then they fix it. Mm -hmm. Like, well, yeah. they broke, they burned down the tavern, and the next day they... Like the Amish rebuilt it, which is awesome. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they're yes. a little bit of everything. Yes. They're the Amish, they're gypsies, they're vigilantes, they're uh Amish, college gypsy, college vigilantes. kids just having too much fun on the weekends. They they yeah. encompass everything. Which is beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And of course, yeah. I am Darewolf, the game master. You're cut off, Zachary. That's all you get. <laughs> the only time you get. No, I'm kidding, go ahead. Did you have anything else to add? No, that's it. Alright, perfect. <laughs> I love you, man. Zachary has been a player in like eight one shots. Uh, he's never been we've never been able to get him into a long running game. Up every time. Maybe one day. <laughs> I know. Maybe one day. I think it's finally getting to him, which is why he's being so sassy. And I love that. I love that journey for him. But with that being said, it is session one, four oh three after Godfall, the Flothal Empire. Hey, I didn't say falafel. Shit, I just did. <laughs> we are outside of Castle White. Lord Harden of Castle White was not an easy man to deal with. However, he paid better than any of the other lords in Flothel. The lord was a type of noble that always wore his full plate armor, helmet on, and visor down, so that only his eyes showed through. Those gray, piercing eyes. The lord of the castle shade, Lord Vryn, was known to take weeks, if not months, to make good on payments. Most said he hoped whomever he had hired would die on another job, so he'd never have to pay them. And then, of course, there was Lord Calvis, who got his mercenaries so drunk that they forgot that he was even supposed to pay them. Then wake up. Then they would wake up somewhere far from the Empire. So, this job was the best in the region. A simple find the bandits, poachers, who had been killing the deer in the woods. The Lord had said he would pay your, the weight in gold for any bandit you brought back. So every bandit you brought back, you'd have to bring back the whole body. If you just brought the heads, you only get paid for the head but he would pay the weight in gold. It was a fine offer, a grand offer, almost too good of an offer, but a job is a job, and in the Roaring Shores mercenary work, 
was the best paying job around. So we're actually going to open our scene likely a few hours, a few hours before you guys actually make your way over to Castle White to meet with meet with the uh to meet with the lord as it were right a few hours before you meet with the lord and why oh that's right that's because i switched that over super professional game master streamer there you go all right perfect so we find ourselves here in the tavern and now the next question is what's the name of the tavern um it's the uh it's the gnome the 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 gallivanting gnome is the name of this tavern. It's the Gallivanting Gnome. It's the only tavern inside of Castle White's town. And a somewhat eclectic group, somewhat eclectic group of mercenaries sits at the center table. The tavern itself is not very crowded. There's a number of other, you know, just like commoners, workers, probably a couple of wood, like craftsmen, things of that nature. And there's a few interesting characters other than your characters themselves. We see that there is a surly looking man uh, off in the corner who is playing with what appears to be a tiny cracked holy symbol of one of the gods. There is a man with a large round shield on his back, kind of strung over his back, and a rapier on his hip that is that is that has two mugs in front of him. And he keeps going from one mug to the other as though he's trying to figure out which to drink. And he's trying to have a conversation with the gnome bartender who is just doing that thing that bartenders do when someone's probably a little bit too drunk. And he's just kind of like, uh-huh, uh-huh, you can drink that. And then there is also a woman uh, that is wearing a breastplate. She has very bright blonde hair and she has a journal out in front of her, an ink quill, a little feather, a very nice sort of like purple feather pen, and she is very, very intently writing in her journal. And then, of course, we have all of you. So I'd like Zoltan to take a moment to describe his character in this moment. What does he look like? Who is his daddy, and what does he do, as it were? Um, Zoltan is a uh, fairly short and slim for a dwarf. He's... Uh, three foot 11 actually like he's not even four feet tall um long black hair black beard uh his eyes are kind of golden though mm -hmm. um he's well dressed um he has a loot on his back and um a uh a great uh a, a masterwork war axe uh next to him uh gleaming uh and he's uh he's he's sitting uh not quite in a booster seat but uh there's definitely like a a dwarven sized tall chair and he's got his boots up and he's smoking a pipe i like it okay let's pivot over to twang twang um is uh about five eight five nine and he's got a long black hair and his piercing green eyes. And he currently has uh, his uh, boots propped up on the table as if he owns the place, uh, which is fairly standard for his bad manners. Um, he is wearing a, a, a mishmash of um, different types of cloth that have been sort of made into like uh, a cloak slash cape. He's not really sure. Um, and uh, he's uh, just uh, trying to chat up uh, the, the poor guy at, at the bar behind him, trying to see if he... he but uh, both of them clearly aren't talking the same thing. So there's miscommunication, and no one seems to be paying much attention to him right now. I like it. I like it. All right, let's put on over to Mr. Revelry. Revelry himself. Take it away. Oh, me, sorry. He skipped Bri. I was like, okay. Um, so, uh, Halava is currently uh, a few cups deep and um, going on about like some sort of story about when he um, was, uh, a, he was, this was back when it was with the Revelry, and he was assaulting a goblin camp, trying to clear it out. And this goblin got stuck in a, uh, a tree 
like honey poo style. Huh. He, yeah. Uh, but he is, yeah. But uh, him himself, he is like six five. Uh, he's currently he doesn't really like wear shirts. It's not a thing he uh, subscribes to. Um, but you know, he's got like pants and uh, I got pants and stuff. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for wearing pants. <laughs> shirts are uh, shirts are prisons for your uh, prisons for your chest. Is that, mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. how you prisons think? Prisons for your pectorals. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that. I agree with that. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right. And last and certainly not least, the man who actually chose to be here. The man who chose to be here. Bri Bri, Brand, tell us a little bit about him. Uh, Ferrand is uh, seven foot two, 350 pounds of pure muscle. Uh, he's sitting there wearing his half plate armor, uh, a sword nearly as tall as he is leaning against the table because it won't, it has to lean, otherwise it won't really sit against the ground he's like sort it. of hunched in the chair over a drink uh listening to hell of a story um uh it's the same drink he's been nursing the whole the whole evening mm-hmm. it's not much in, in, in drinking he'll drink to be social but otherwise um he his his outfit is mostly muted colors so uh military browns dark grays um, his armor is uh, a matte finish, so it's clearly been scrubbed with uh, with sand, so that it doesn't. It's not burnished. It's got the it's got that dull metal uh, look to it, and except for a sash that is uh, across his uh, um, chest, with, uh, with the armor on his chest, which is a bright red. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, military haircut. Uh, brown hair, brown eyes, seems like a fairly intense, uh, but with a twinkle, with a twinkle behind his eyes. So he's a friendly intensity. Thanks, uh... The man behind you, Brian, Brian, this man behind you who is, is palming this broken, cracked symbol uh, in, his, in, his, in his palms, he... You, you get the feeling that he is he's kind of also eyeing you perhaps you were leaning back perhaps you looked over your shoulder he's looking at this cracked holy symbol but as he's looking at it there's like like a little fissure in the middle of it and he's like looking at you through it and you have this feeling like it almost looks like he's piercing through you it just it feels intentional as it were what would you do in that situation um Uh, Farron leans forward, puts his sh- sh- elbows on the table, sort of leans into the table, looks over at Zoltan and says, do you see the man behind me? Aye. Do you see the intensity with which he is burning a hole into my back? Maybe he wants to bed you. I'm going to talk to him, back me up. And then Farron draws himself to his full seven foot two, stands up, turns around, steps up to the man's table and says, Oh, he fucked up. Can I help you, friend? The man continues to stare forward where you were sitting, looking at this cracked holy symbol. Do you have knowledge religion, by chance? Oh, no. Knowledge local. Yes, I have knowledge local. Roll me a knowledge local, please. I have, I have both. You may roll both as well, Zoltan. Uh, I have knowledge religion as well. Oof. Oof. Those were numbers that exist. One uh, eight. <laughs> may, uh, <laughs> may I also roll knowledge religion? You absolutely yeah. may, good sir. A man of the cloth, as it were. Right. Heyo. I am. I am live editing the the rolls because the numbers were all cut off. Because you know nice. we're doing it live. Fuck. It's totally fine. Fuck and, you know, Fuck it. Super professional streamer game master right here. There you go. Yep. You yep. would recognize this symbol, both uh, Havla and Zoltan. You would both recognize this as the symbol of Diel. D Y E apostrophe E L. Diel is the goddess of justice, solstices, and alchemy. Uh, she is described as being eerily beautiful, with pale skin, 
shoulder length dark red hair and eyes the color of gleaming steel that is the way she is described the symbol itself is broken and the man seems almost entranced by it you can see that there are several empty mugs uh one of them is kind of fallen over on a plate you can see a little bit of the alcohol had dribbled onto the plate half-eaten food there was a like a chicken breast uh it's been picked at but not eaten but as you call out to him Barant, he seems to break from a trance and he he quickly sets the broken symbol down there's a kind of clanging clattering noise as it strikes the table and he pulls his hands back and, and seems to almost brush off the fact that he'd been holding that symbol. I'm sorry, uh, did you say something? I I was in a bit of a daze there for a moment. Uh, by the gods, you are you are very tall, sir. Uh, may I yes. detect... Sorry, uh, may I detect magic? Sure. During that? Absolutely. Anything off of him or the symbol? Uh, you detect magic, Avila, and the symbol itself is detecting his magic. He himself has a magic ring and appears to be wielding a magic weapon um, that is on that is leaning against the table, similar to Varan's enormously large sword. Uh, both appear to be enchanted, but his armor, clothing, the rest of him is unenchanted. But he had responded to your question, Varan, and how do you respond to his? statement well in future perhaps have your sessions of absentness with your eyes pointed elsewhere friend or else you might find yourself on the wrong end of a short conversation oh god was i was i doing it again was i staring at someone and not realizing it i i, I promise you sir I meant no disrespect. No disrespect by what I was doing. It's just... Don't you... Don't you ever wonder... If... Don't you ever wonder why... Why it all happened. Why... Why the gods are so silent about what happened. Bodies upon bodies stacked on top of one another. Some even say the mountains to the north are not made of stone, but made of bone. Doesn't it ever make your mind just wonder? How could a goddess of justice, and emotions down to the broken holy symbol, allow such things to happen? If it's all true, where was the justice in that? And he seems said, to not be friend. asking the question directly of you, but more of like, to the universe. It is said, friend, that perhaps the mortal races have outgrown their need for gods. And the gods took that poorly. But what do I know? I'm simply a full simian who is far from home. And then, you... and then I tell the guy, and then I tell the guy, it's all in the wrist <laughs> right right it's all in the wrist. That's so and then of course you know being me uh, laughing too much uh tip over all and then my, like, my tail <laughs> may or up. may not had a a play in that just like <laughs> the man at the right. uh, <clears throat> at the bar um all right. turns around looks back at the gnome and says which of these two was he drinking the gnome motions to the right one the man takes the left one and takes a very small sip of that alcohol. But back to this man that was that was talking with you, Brian. How do you respond? You had said you're just a simple man, etc. The man nods his head. Yes, yes, I I am perhaps just overthinking things again. I I um I apologize for any any offense that I brought to you and your your friends. I um allow, allow me to pay for your drinks. As a, as a gesture of goodwill. There's no need, friend. Uh, I see you're alone. Would you like to sit with us? Perhaps we could offer you something to stare at that won't get you into trouble. N no, no. I um. And uh, no. Farron gestures back to his uh, to his red friend. No, no, no. Here, no. here. No, no. I Come, um. Sit. We should have no, speech I... of. No. 
I am. Um... As a man of the cloth to another man of the cloth, please come. No, no, I am. Um... There's somewhere I must be. I am. I'm already late, but um. Best of luck on your journeys, wherever they take you. And. Before you go, um. You you bemoan the gods, eh? but. Would it not be fair to treat them as we would treat anyone else? If you, if a kid accidentally knocks over another kid, it's something that they've done, but if that kid also has done a lifetime of great things, should we not overlook it? The gods are like people, but they are on such a greater level than us. We cannot see what they see or understand what they see. As a bit of thought. Your words seem to embed themselves in his facial expression. Like, you can see, like, almost as though as, you, as he's listening, his expression softens slightly. He nods. Yes. Perhaps even the gods, for all of their wisdom, they are still fallible. And perhaps that is why they are still worthy of worthy of worship because they are a mirror of ourselves they must work on themselves then who too should we perhaps and he will then turn and very quickly exit out of the tavern leaving you all the rest to yourselves and your thoughts I'm gonna pivot well, over that was weird it's weird uh, it did seem weird yeah I'd like huh? to pivot, what? I'd like to pivot over to the man at the bar who has turned and is now facing Twang. And he his expression is one of slight recognition. And he, he is he's really, really just kind of eyeballing some of the patchwork of your clothing. Um and he says, uh, where again did you say you were from, sir? I don't recall you somewhere to the north, you had said. Uh, talking to me? Yes, you, the drunk one, and the jerking off joke that you just told that seemed to fall rather flat. That wasn't a jerking off joke, that was how, how one properly, you know, treats a lady. Is that it? No? All right. Damn it. Uh, what, 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 um, I didn't say anything about any, what? It asked where you were from, sir. I mean, I'm with my friends. He lets the question hang in the air for a few moments. Then narrow eyedly shakes his head and turns back to the gnome and uh, asks to order some food. Now, to remind you all, you have come here because the Lord of Castle White has put out a call for competent mercenaries. There is apparently a number of bandits inside the White Wood who have been poaching the Lord's deer, as it were. I want to give you guys a couple moments to talk amongst yourselves about how you'd like to proceed, why you're perhaps taking this job, and then when you're ready, you do have a meeting later in the day with the Lord, with the Lord of Castle White. But I'm just going to leave the scene to you guys for a few minutes. So, uh, what was that all about? Oh, I, uh, I would... I don't reckon I know. You, uh... You seem to have worked your charms similar to how you have in taverns across the country, Twang. Yeah. Yeah. I always do, don't I? Yeah. Uh, uh, I... You always do? So, uh... Who do you think that... Who do you think he was? Uh, I mean, still at the lost. bar. We can't, we can't, you know, just discuss the guy at the bar right, like, right now. No, no, 
He's talking about not, the, not the, the guy barman. With the, the symbol. The, the who? The man with the symbol. I was staring at uh... the the guy you weren't paying attention to. Oh, the... oh. So Go back right. to drinking. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I presume another lost cleric. Yeah. But present company excluded, of course. <laughs> I'm not lost. I'm right where I need to be, my friend. And is that place uh, telling you any idea on how we can catch these poachers? Well, like any other poacher, you find what they're trying to poach when you watch it. Does this all feel a little pat to you? A little too good to be true? It does It does seem a little bit above our station. Or below our station. Not that we're, you know, extravagant or anything. I bet the pay's good. Indeed. Too ah, good. That's, that's what seems weird. But if one is going to prove themselves the greatest warrior in the current age... Yes, taking, taking down on poachers. To... Ah, taking on jobs that aren't what they seem will add to the legend. I uh, suppose. And he turns around and uh, looks at the blonde lady and says, Hey, uh, miss, what do you think about this? Oh. And she is, it seems to be right in the middle of like a very important sentence or passage. And as you interrupt her, she jumps, starts a little bit. And you can see the the quill drag across the page. She goes, fuck! What? I don't know you. You don't know me. So why would you interrupt me? I was just in the middle of a... You've ruined this entire I, page of writing. You stupid, over, scaly son of a bitch. I look over Whoa. and cast Prestidigitation and uh, Prestidigitate the... Uh, uh, the slashed ink off of the page and throw it at the uh, at the hobgoblin. As it splats onto his face, she looks down at her page, looks over at Zoltan. Thank you, sir. It is nice to know that manners are not completely dead. She goes back to writing. <clears throat> well, excuse me. I'm just trying to ask a nice lady her thoughts. But if I... It's unwelcome. I apologize. Besides, my name is Halava, Halava the Revelry. Now we're not strangers. The mention of Halava, the Revelry, she finishes her sentence, smiles, picks up the page, blows on the journal, sets it back down to let it dry, and she looks up. It is nice to meet you, Halava. Did I mention, that is to say, did you mention that you were of the Revelry? Yeah, and he, he um, and he, and he turns his back around, and you see, you see the giant like stained glass tattoo mosaic of the one symbol of the revelry, and then one symbol of Mevic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Kind of comes off like a story piece on his back. I like that. I like that. She, all of a sudden, all at once, seems very interested in what you have to say, Halava. In fact, she gets up, drags a t chair over. Lops it down right next to you and takes a seat. She still has not introduced herself, but she begins to ask you questions. How long ago was it that you traveled with the revelry? What cities did you visit? How far west did you go? Have you been all the way north? Where else have you traveled to? Have you ever been to the island, the, the roaring <coughs> island to the south? <coughs> it just goes on and on and on, just <coughs> continuing to ask questions. Ma'am, 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 calm down. I have this is many questions for such a short time. Uh, may I ask why you're so uh, interested? Give me a. Do you have knowledge local? Um, I have knowledge history and knowledge religion. Um, Give me knowledge religion, because okay. now that she's sitting right next to you, you can see that her breastplate it's low right underneath the the sternum like where the sternum ends mm -hmm. you can see a a golden symbol that is emblazoned 
Um, like it had been melted into the metalwork of the breastplate. You Seven. don't readily recognize it, but anyone else at the table that has knowledge religion is welcome to make that check as well. Uh, uh, I have religion and local. What were you going to say, Symbol? Hey. Knowledge nobility? I would take knowledge nobility. Absolutely. Please save me from this, <laughs> this nope, groupie. Nope. You're not sure. You're a little drunk. I know. You, I am actually not drunk. I'm just an idiot. You sometimes. actually recognize this so there is a region that is north of the Flothal empire it is basically the the central the central hub of all of the roaring shores it is called the thralls theocracy thralls theocracy and they are they are like the sort of the religious heart of the entire Roaring Shores. And because they are the central located, pretty much all trade, travel, pretty much anywhere you're going to move, unless you're taking a boat and sailing around the outside of the continent, you know, around the shores of the Roaring Shores, all puns intended, you will travel through the theocracy. So they hold a considerable amount of power. One of their, the arms of the theocracy is a sect known as the Inquisition. And this woman is wearing the insignia of the Inquisition on her breastplate. Now, based on your knowledge check, Zoltan, you would know that if they take interest in you, it's genuinely, generally, genuinely, generally, not a good thing. Because it probably means you're in trouble by their standards. So she is just leaning in and a lot of their agents will be very friendly until they're not. It's kind of their play. Because most okay. people oh, aren't as well-rounded and knowledgeable as Zoltan, right? Not as knowledgeable. But you recognize them. Perhaps you've even heard of or had a run-in with them at one point. It doesn't always spell doom, but it's not a good thing for them to take interest in you. So her line of questioning, where have you traveled? Where did you go? What cities have you visited? And she gets, she starts to press more and more, Avila, more and more into yeah. where specifically um, you've been, specifically over the last six months. Where have you been over the last six months? Uh, so I would... Uh... I would like to attempt a perception check, or is like a passive perception situation here? Is that something? What were you trying Sense to do? Sense motive. Um, like read uh, Zoltan and Farah. Sense motive. Sense motive. Oh, sense That's motive. That's yes. okay. Yes. That's what uh, you're looking for. Yeah. Sorry. Can I get a sense motive on her too? Absolutely. Uh, I'm a I'm a D and D boy. I'm sorry. No, you're good, baby. Oh, bird. I don't know the the black speech yet. Uh, so okay. Havala. You are getting... What is your expression? I'm not going to tell you. Zoltan, what does your expression look like? You tell Dead. you tell Havilau what he sees on your face. Uh, How well can... Where is she sitting? Uh, she's facing oh, okay. away from you. So she's facing away from but me. you saw her sitting. Uh, yeah. As soon as like he looks up at me, I'm not going to like move, but he gives her... He gives him like a... All right, all right. Um, uh, as she presses me to um, ask, where have I been? Where have I gone? I said, well, I've been in many places, ma'am. Um, more importantly, I'd like to be in your bed tonight. She lets that roll off her shoulders. Yeah, not giving her an answer, really, is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm getting that. Specifically, she asks if you had ever traveled through Westero. That's West, W-E-S-T-H-E-R-O. Westero is the capital of the Thralls Theocracy. Thralls Theocracy. She specifically makes mention of a time five and a half months ago, and she makes a very specific reference to a particular tavern 
inside of the capital of the theocracy. Now, I'm going to leave it up to you, Avala. Were you and your friends there, or were you not? I am not going to pigeonhole you. It is your choice if you were there. Just take note that depending on how you decide to answer this question will determine how things go here henceforth. Mm -hmm. both, um, both have interesting consequences, but it's up to you if you guys were there or not. How did you make I, your way here? Am I going to be a shit stirrer? Is that what's going on? Are you an agent of chaos is my question. I'm getting I'm getting a head, a head yes. <laughs> um, uh, one thing, it is Halava. That's what I said. You spelled it wrong then, because you've got it Havala in the character sheet. Quiet. I, I, I did. I, sp I spelled it just like it was spelled in your character sheet. But that's Havala. all right. It's Havala, it's Havala in your uh, on the Zoom call too. Yeah, that's oh, I, literally, I just took it directly <laughs> off your character sheet. Yeah, yeah, Havala. Havala. Yeah, you've been telling us. You just corrected it that it was Halava. Hava, Hava, Havala. That's what I'm saying. Havala. Havala. Yeah. yeah, but you just told us it was the opposite. With the Did I? The I'm yeah. fucking yes. stupid. It's the yellow in the middle. Havala. Havala. You, you, you've yeah, been yeah, pronouncing yeah. Like it Halava? That's mm -hmm. what so, I said. But it's Havala. Right? You've been saying it the way it's spelled, Wolf. And he corrected you to be it wrong. And we're telling him that he's wrong about his own character name. And Shut up! <laughs> so I'm so basically all I'm hearing from this, the only thing I've learned is that I'm still right, which is perfect. Yep, yep, yep. 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 Love that journey for me. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> so she is still waiting for an answer. Havala. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I have it not been there. Um... We, um, yep, um, was, was, was that the time with the, no, the lady no, no, on it, the table, it, it, uh, and, that, um, and that you, or was that the was, time? She was fine, all right, when I left, okay, the, the cucumber well, well, Are you out. suspicious that she wouldn't have been? What? I'm sorry, what's the question? The woman gives you this almost flirtatious smile, flashes her beautiful pearly whites, like perfect teeth. For a fantasy setting, they look unnaturally clean, and they probably <laughs> are. Then her smile vanishes. She pushes her chair back slowly, gives you a kind of a frown. You know... I think I mistook you for someone else. You reminded me of an old friend, or a friend of a friend, and it seems I was mistaken. I'll take my leave. There is business I must also. Can, can I sense Oodles. motive? That Absolutely you can sense motive on her. <laughs> as she goes back to her table 22. to collect her journal. 22. Yeah! She's lying to you. <laughs> she does reckon like she like she's just she's looking for an exit to get out of here right yeah. now is what you're saying well i mean it seems like that's not true uh if you that's a very bad lie <laughs> and trust me i know bad lies yeah that that's me that's me that okay <laughs> that that tracks that tracks uh listen if you did I do something to you? That night was kind of... Uh, no, haze, no, but... no. You have done nothing to me, my friend. Absolutely nothing. Again, I, I must take my leave, and I, I don't wish to be rude, but I wish you and your friends a safe and productive journey. May the gods watch over you. And hey, if you ever want to bring that, the, those, the, those beautiful uh, things behind you, uh, we're here. I, We're here. I will be sure to take note of that and be happy. Take it. Uh, take you up on that offer in a future time. Until then. Uh, yeah, I make a. I make an effort to try and remember her face, just so I. It's very reference. hard to forget. I want you yeah. to think like the most like 
not blonde, but like yellow hair, like ye like yellow, like dyed yellow hair, like mm -hmm. banana yellow, mm -hmm. and piercing banana. sky blue eyes. Right. Just all right. There is there is some rumor that those of the Inquisition undergo magical, basically drugging that warps them, and so many of yeah. the Inquisition have the piercing yellow hair, yeah. piercing sky blue eyes, the yellow banana yellow hair. It's very common. Are uh, they Nazis? What? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm not uh, saying the they're not. The, the Nazis wouldn't have turned other people into Aryans. They would only oh. have been Aryans. <laughs> That's true. They would have been pure Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, I was going to say something. forgot what it was. That's fine. That well, was... who's ready to go on a wild goose chase tomorrow? Oh, um, I'm going to need you a guys... lot more drinks before we do that. Uh, Zoltan is going to tell them what she is. Obviously. Bad news. Oh, I figured yeah. she was bad news. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He As he brings up like, his ready bow and like, yeah, worse, I, was, I was ready. Worse news than you all probably imagined. Yeah, she's not going to leave us alone, is she? Uh, no. Uh, you at least. She, she's not going to well, leave you alone. I thought I like gave her a one night stand or something. I, nope. I don't think she I, I don't. I, I don't. I've I don't never think she's seen the you one successfully. Did, did Avala just make a reference that maybe she was looking for her baby daddy because that is hilarious <laughs> that's a thought that crossed my mind it's like did I, okay did I, did I sleep with you my, my as father a, as, a, as a as a thought when i was preparing for the game i'm like he's gonna have a business card it's gonna say healer brawler professional himbo professional himbo <laughs> yeah, fantastic <laughs> I mean, that's, he's got a 10 intelligence. So that's not canon, close enough. but I like yes. where your mind's at. Oh, no, it's definitely <laughs> canny. He has those, like a pack of 50 at least. All right, that's, that's a weird. It's a, it's got got weird really a, fast. Yeah, really Yield fast. Kinkos. I like it. I like it. It's canon. Yield Kinkos. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. All right, gentlemen. <laughs> like so disappointment you, around the table here. You <laughs> finish your meal. You pay your tab. The man at the bar is back to looking at his two drinks. He has now gone to the same drink that Twang was drinking. And as Twang gets up to leave, he like motions with the mug and goes, it's a good choice. Glug, 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 it's, glug. It's, it's like the cheapest beer. <laughs> like, but it gets you there. It yeah, gets you but there. I didn't drink it either. So mine is almost full. It gets I'm not, you I'm not the only one that doesn't. Uh, he's not the only one that doesn't drink. So we cut to a scene. A hour or so later, and you, along with a number of other mercenaries, have arrived at Castle White. There's half a dozen other small bands, three mercenaries, four or five, no more than six in a group. And each of you are effectively interviewing for the right to take on this job. The first group that goes in is a group of halflings with... Riding dogs. Um, they call themselves the Half Stout Doggos. That is their mercenary uh, company name. Uh, they come out of their meeting frowning um, and calling Lord Harden uh, a heightist. Uh, they call him a heightist uh, because apparently he said they couldn't do the job because they were too short. The next group that goes in uh, is two half orcs, an elf, and a uh, and a bugbear. Actually. Uh, they call themselves two half orcs, an elf, and a bugbear. They're not very good with names, but that is their mercenary company. Uh, they get shooed away because uh, Lord Harden is allergic to bear. Um, that's his reasoning behind that. Mm -hmm. The other three groups go in, and each and every one, one after another, is turned away until finally it is your mercenary company's group's chance to go in and sell yourselves on being the men for the job. Most important question of the night. What is the name of your mercenary company? Three dudes and a baby. 
in a hole. I'm sorry, I'm not making decisions today. <laughs> Company name generator. I love it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love hey, you it. do it with your city names. We do it with our. Company oh, absolutely! Names. I do it with my city names. Love me some random name generators. Oh. We are. <laughs> well, we're definitely not the Sisterhood of Strength. <laughs> Why not? Well, we can, be, can we be the Blood Jackets? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we're the Blood Jackets. And as you are standing outside of his hall, getting ready to enter into Lord Harden's council chamber, a man announces, And now I present to you, Lord Harden, the Blood Jackets. Lord Harden is dressed in his full plate. It is a silver shined to where it reflects. It's like you feel like you're looking at yourself as you talk to him, sort of shininess. The same kind of opulence that a certain member of the company might be familiar with, but ran away from. I won't ruin the backstory. I won't ruin the backstory. Mm. A certain member of the company. This all feels very familiar to you, good sir. Maybe a little uncomfortable. Do with that as you see fit. But as the man on the right-hand side, this half-orc with fiery red hair. He looks more like a sea captain than he does an announcer, but he makes the announcement, and as you walk in, Lord Harden, again, wearing his full plate visor down, they've got these ridiculous black feathers that come out, kind of looks like a headdress, almost looks, looks like he's a peacock, and he is sitting somewhat slouched in this opulent, massive throne that is made of wood but it's plated in platinum and gold and jewels and gems it's it's made to look it looks uncomfortable actually to sit in but maybe that's why he's wearing full plate right another mercenary company you've brought me what do these ones call themselves again theodore you said the, the blood letters the, the bloodies what was your name again the we'll blood, jackets. blood jacket. <clears throat> blood jackets. So you're saying that you wear jackets made of blood? What does that even mean? I mean, uh, sometimes when the blood splashes on us, it's like a jacket. Yeah. It's more of a metaphor, really. Explain right. it to me, then, this metaphor. Educate well, me if you can. It has several Some, meanings. Yeah, sometimes, you know, you pop somebody in the head and they spray blood everywhere and you're jacketed in it. Sometimes they get stabbed and it gets all over their... There's lots of times that people can be covered in jackets of blood and it just kind of... Uh, there was a day we had a laugh about it. It kind of worked and it just stuck. It was a, it was an inside joke, so... There is a silence in the chamber. And then the blue human, blue-haired human, off to his his right-hand side, left-hand side of the chamber, goes, <laughs> Wait, I get it. Uh, Lord Lord Harden, I, I get it. Because it's like it's like a jacket made of blood. Because they, they, they killed the bad guys, right? It's, it's good. Hey, I like this guy. Hey. Shut up, Henry. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. As you can see, you were the last of half a dozen mercenary companies that I have offered the opportunity, the privilege of being able to serve me in a matter that is most near and dear to my heart. I have very few pleasures in this world. The weight of rulership weighs heavy upon me. But one of those pleasures is hunting in my white mm. woods. A group of bandits has made the woods their home, decided to prey upon the very deer that I hunt. This is an atrocity that cannot be allowed to stand. You think yourselves brave enough? Strong enough? Wise enough? To find them, kill them, and bring them back here? 
Well, yeah. we have a ranger and we can arrange for a cart. Seems like all we'll need. Yeah. Perhaps perhaps a larger wagon. Give me a perception check on the three of these. All of us? Everyone. Everyone that wants to. Damn. <laughs> Skills is not my... Not bad. I have a plus 10 and still got a, uh, that one. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I love that for me. Twang. You notice that Lord Lord Harden's eyes, those piercing gray eyes that are the only thing visible through his visor, they are staring directly at your seven-foot-plus-tall friend. They seem to be very similar to this other man that you noticed earlier, burning a hole through him. In fact, the, the stare reminds you in some ways of that man. Now, that man's eyes were different, but just the intensity of that stare, it rings a bell. You may do something with that. You may just simply acknowledge it. Early up to you. Um, I take out my bow as a, more of as a, to show that you know I'm a ranger. See, I'm a ranger. I have arrows. Like very awkwardly showing things, not really saying anything. I like, like that. Just showing off a little bit. He sighs heavily. Well, being as you are all the last of a disappointing lot, I will give you the opportunity to complete this job. Would you do so as I have laid out in the agreement? I will pay you the weight, sum of gold in the weight of each of the bandits you bring back. I do not care if you bring a head or a whole body or a body and a head. But you will only be allowed to weigh one portion of that body. But should you choose to sever a head from the rest of the frame, you may weigh the head or the frame. Is that understood? Indeed. Yeah. In one piece. <clears throat> Very well. Be gone with you. Do not return until the job is completed. Before we go, do you have any information on these poachers, or...? If I had information on precisely where they were, then what use would I have of idiots like you? I'm just asking. I it's do good not. Every... Find them and return. And unless you have something more pertinent to ask, refrain from asking further stupid questions. We have a ranger. We'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Lord Harden thanks you for your service and looks forward to you returning post haste. Good day to you all and good luck on your quest. And with the red hair quickly moves over and kind of gives the you guys should. Yeah. What? Cheerio. <clears throat> Farron gives him like a like a sorry uh, uh, kind of half-hearted an salute, and then it's kind of an asshole. And as uh, as Havala is leaving, uh, the man with the red hair says, "Just so you know, it's not personal. He's just temperamental in his old age. I'm sure you understand." Yeah, he comes off as a real dick. Yeah. Yes. Huge. Massive. Yes. Yeah. You pay good. You, oh, you're very right. well. Yes, uh, okay. he always pays, on time and in full. Yes. One of the reasons folks put up with his rough attitude, as it were. Uh, but, um, yes, if I you heard. all need anything, um, figure it out, because it's not my job. And he slams the doors to the, to the hall behind you, and uh, leaving you all to well, travel out into the wilderness, as it were. I, I sidestep <laughs> to, to, to Fern. Hey, big guy. Um, the king seemed to give you be giving you the side eye just like the the priest earlier like mm. was 
Oh yeah. I mean, he was. I attract stairs. It's the size. No, this is this is this is different. This is this was really like the other. Hmm. Yeah. Well, perhaps he's done business with my parents. The three ashes are a fairly well-known magisters. The what? Uh, they do wizard stuff. Oh, right. It's smart people magic, not mine. Did you just say smart people magic? Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that is absolutely hilarious. Thank you. Thank you. Thank so you. the white wood is a relatively large, large swath of land. And uh, I need to quickly update the uh, the actual distance of this particular map. But uh, do that really quick. So the woods themselves are roughly a 70 square mile region of land. All right. So mm -hmm. you've got some time. Basically, we move into our... How do I put this? We're going to move into our... The random investigation, encounter portion of the evening. <laughs> or random encounter, or investigation phase, I could say. Investigation phase of the evening. Where you guys can ask around town, simply head out into the wilds. Entirely up to you guys how you'd like to proceed, so I'm going to leave it to you on how you'd like to approach this vague uh, job. Farrand, knowing how who the, who the rest of the people are in this group, turns immediately to Zoltan and says, Will it be worth it to ask around town, do you think? Or should we head straight out? It would be worth it for some of us to ask around town. Oh, yeah, I, I meant you. Uh, n neither neither Havilad nor I should speak to anyone. Wait, why? Uh, we are we are not good at extracting information, friend. What I'm good at is extracting blood jackets. <laughs> that could get us information. Not from the one I extract it from. Well, yeah, we, we get two people. But one next to the other would, they would do the, the blood I'm jacket also, thing. Though. I'm also bad at figuring out whether people are lying. Yeah. Yeah. Same. 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 Why don't we get drunk? Three of I you love that. I love go that. to the drunk. tavern and get drunk. Yeah. First, get us some supplies. Then go to the tavern and get drunk. I will go ask around. I mean, maybe let's not. Uh, sure, that supplies for sure. A little drunk. A little supplies. Uh, a lot drunk. No. A lot of supplies. A little drunk. I I'll take a lot of both. I I'll, I'll, I'll... Avala? No, no, it's, it's Avala? fine. It's fine. It's fine. I can, I, we can get supplies. I'll, I'll get the supplies. I get it. Fun. Yeah, sure. Um, fun drunk, not angry drunk. Yeah, <laughs> with that that uh, uh, disembodied voice said. I, I will go fourth said. wall, sir. Yes. We, let, we head to the shops to to buy some supplies. Yeah. Okay. I am going to hit the streets and uh, I'm just going to make a circuit at first. Okay. Kind of kind of get the feel of the place. Mm. Um see if you know, kind of look for the shadier areas. Um you know, I, I I know my way around both sides of the street, so to speak. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love that. So as you are making your way around the somewhat shadier parts of town, give me a perception check. Give me a perception check, it's old town. There is only Zoltan. Ah, beautiful. All right. As you are making your way around somewhat shadier parts of town, you notice that you are being followed at some point. 
you notice you're being followed by a woman who looks like this. Give me a knowledge religion check. Unfortunate. You're not sure. However, she's giving you strong Inquisition vibes. But you're not sure exactly who she is. <laughs> How do you Okay, proceed? um... I am going to... Uh, hold on one second. I need to check something. Believe in you. Have faith. Um, I'm going to try and slip them, not like slip away from them, but slip out of their sight and let them get past. And as soon as they get, uh, this is what I'm trying to do is once they get past, uh, just kind of slip right next to the one, uh, in front and start up a conversation. That's, that's kind of what my, okay. So here's what you see. You are going to give us a stealth check. That's what you're going to give us. A little stealth check here. Opposed by their perception check. Which is pretty good. Let's see what happens. Believe in you. All right. Here's what happens, Zoltan. You slip down an alleyway. A minute later see this woman walk past. For all intents and purposes, you think you lost him. I w I'm not trying to lose her. Okay. I'm sliding out of sight, and as soon as she walks past where I am, mm -hmm. I take up step with her uh, back S out in the open. Like and I'm like, side and side. Is, there something, is there something I can help you with, ma'am? Well, a couple things you notice. As you step out, behind her, about 30 steps back, 30 feet, you see two what appear to be identical versions of her. One is dressed in all white. One is dressed in a sort of greenish gray kind of leather. And then this one is dressed in all black. I'm going to give you another knowledge, uh, religion, history, whatever you got. History is better than religion. Go for it. And he's by himself? He, it's up to you guys. If someone wants to be with him, I, I am by myself. By himself. Yes. All right. Yeah, we, everyone we else is off drinking, so. not is getting getting supplies. Twang, you are I'm getting, getting supplies. I'm getting supplies. They're drinking. Yes, that's <laughs> I don't drink that much. Yeah. Well, he's drinking. You're, you ha you're keeping him out of trouble. Perhaps yeah. it was you feeling, you know, maybe, maybe you just weren't quite focused in this moment. In this moment, Sultan. But all at once, you recognize who these women are. There is a... So you know how you've got, you've got the Theocracy to the North, and you've got the Inquisition? The Inquisition are like sergeants. Whoa. They have their foot soldiers. And there's a group of foot soldiers that are very well known. They are called the Three Sisters. Some say they are clones of one another. Some say they were triplets. But they are not to be trifled with. The woman whom you walk sand in hand turns around or turns to look at you and gives you that a very similar warm smile. The woman with the banana yellow hair, piercing sky blue eyes and the pearly white smile. Her smile is the same pearly white smile. Perfect teeth. She looks at you. Good day to you, good dwarf. Me and my sisters are looking for someone. Someone who I believe you may be acquainted with. He is red. The other sister says, yes, red. Red like like the mountains. Red like the blood-soaked mountains to the north. 
The other sister continues the phrase, the sentence. Yes, yes, red and scaled. Scaled like, like a lizard. No, no, says the one standing in front of you. No, no, not like a lizard. Like, no, no, the other one says. Like, what is that creature out in the, in the hold area? The, the armadillo. Yes, yes, like an armadillo. You know of such a man. Such a creature. I know I've seen one, several, such as that, in my travels. No, no, no. Each of them say no in unison. And then, the one standing in front of you, specifically here, in this town. We have it on God's authority. That a particular <laughs> hobgoblin has made his nest here. We wish to speak with him. It is a matter of spiritual importance. Well, let me tell you what. If I do see this hobgoblin of yours, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Give me a bluff check. I have not lied to them, by the way. Just... Or you could do diplomacy if you want. In. Okay. They are not currently hostile. At worst, they are neutral to you right now. The one wearing the white shirt that is standing... Now ten paces, ten feet behind you. I think he is being honest, as do I, sister. One in front of you. It is good to see that even outside of the holy boundaries of the theocracy, there are still faithful that can be relied upon. She will give you a small kind of bow. And then in unison, all three of them turn and head away from you like the ripples of a rock that you had thrown into the water. And they just go down different alleys, down the road, turn down a street, and then just disappear in like around buildings over the course of about 10 seconds, leaving you alone to your own devices. I can certainly be relied upon. All right, Zoltan will go back to his task. So you've got a chance to ask around town. What specifically are you trying to gather? What are you uh, What are you trying to learn, my friend? Does anybody know anything about these bandits? The bonus um, check to gather information. That was really good, Zoltan. You start asking beggars, commoners, craftsmen. Maybe you stop by a tavern. You run into Twang. He's uh, not drinking, but looks super cool. And uh, what would you be doing, Twang? Where would you be at? Maybe he runs in. So I'm, 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 I'm just gathering like uh, supplies, like food, food rations, water. Yeah. You go into a shop. You see him actually doing the thing. Like he's not getting drunk because he's hmm. actually very competent. And uh, I don't know if you can acknowledge each other or not, but uh, the the shopkeeper of this particular shop is a human man. Uh, looks to be a little bit too young to own the shop, probably inherited it from his dad or something or mom, who knows. But he's like, oh, yeah, the uh, the, the bandits. I I heard about that. The um, the Lord, he, he sent out a uh, like a meeting request or something or a, a gathering, a call. That's what it's called, a call, right? Uh, looking for... Are, you one of the mercenaries I've been hearing about in town? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it can be considered as fact. No. One of the gods' words as it were. But there was a group of individuals in here about, oh, two weeks ago or so, right? They were getting supplies, like snares and traps and stuff. They said they were, uh... 
they were heading over into the uh, the Sultanate, over to the east. They were going to do some uh, some trapping in one of the free free woods out there. But, uh, you know, it was about that time they... Uh, all this kind of mess with the deer started happening. So, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, this is plotly significant, but uh, it could be. <laughs> you no, know, perhaps. Yeah, they... um. They said they were heading east, but, I mean, maybe they're just bad with directions and headed west into the woods. I mean, I know for myself, if, if I went out past a road, I'd get lost two ways to Sunday. They're just accidental poachers. <laughs> That's awesome. Accidental poachers. I'm going to murder them regardless, so. Yeah. They're dead. Is it's it fine. murder if it's sanctioned by the ruling class? Then is yeah, it just, ethical. Or then is it just you justice? Just, you've immediately turned it into an ethical discussion. I mean... <laughs> go on. It's it's sanctioned murder, but still murder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just because uh, I'm paranoid now. Are, are, are me and uh, uh, Farron being... <laughs> you are not being followed, surprisingly enough. Okay. Awesome. I rolled a secret D4 and they got Zoltan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and not me. <laughs> the person that they were after. If it nice. was you, this would be a very different story. Yeah, I'd be dead. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. A little bit. Maybe they're all show. Half dead. Maybe it's all blustered. Yeah. 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 That plus 15 did. Yeah. Maybe they just have skill focus. Who knows? Uh, uh, just, just skill focus. Sure. 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 It'll sure. yeah. be fine. Yeah. Any other okay. questions you have, Zoltan, as you're trying to gather information about these would-be bandits? Um, yeah, just general, general location. Uh, did you ever give me any information from my uh, diplomacy check? Yeah, you got the information about that. There were some trappers and hunters oh, the that came in. Yeah, yep. I'm sorry, yep. I'm sorry. No, you're good. ADD. I um Okay. Oh, man. Oh, I also I also want to like get a better handle on the king. Okay. Like what the lord like as it were? Yeah, the lord. Uh okay. why he's so weird about these bandits. Like, uh, why he would be willing to spend so much money. An and... exuberant amount of money? Yeah. So, you ask about the king. The, the lord, as it were. Lord Harden. And the young man is not as forthcoming with this information. And Twang, you would pick up on this as well as you are gathering maybe some a water skins, trail rations. You can you're overhearing this because you're in the shop at the same time, right? The young man seems uncomfortable when you start to really begin to ask questions, but he says, "Oh, the Lord, he's um, well, well, he always pays, and um, he's very fair, and 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 he keeps the city very very safe, and 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 very organized, and." It's um, and we're grateful and we're lucky and grateful to have him. Is 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 what it is. We're lucky and grateful. Mm hmm. Yes. Hey, uh, kid. Do, do you remember um how much food they brought um uh, those trappers? Oh, uh, days? I keep really good notes. Uh, actually, I I have it. I have it here. Give me one second. He takes out a big ledger, flips back. One, two, three, three weeks. Okay, got it. Uh. A month's worth. Uh, a month's worth of trout ration for six individuals. Hmm. Guess the king would uh, would pay handsomely to get his, uh, his little forest cleaned up from the poachers. Wait. So... So you're saying you think there is a connection then between these men? Oh gods, does that mean does that mean that I that I'm the reason that they're able to Oh god, uh, am I liable? Am I Breathe. Am Breathe. I a, Am I part of Breathe. Am I 
Did I? Oh, oh God. And he starts to have a genuine panic attack. I like, slap him almost as hard as possible. Give me a strength check. <laughs> I'm really excited to see where this goes. Uh, yep. It stings like a motherfucker. Stings. Ow! Uh, oh, jeez. Th thank you. I uh, think I needed All that. Right. It's just... Sit. Wait, look at me. Look at me. Yes. Look at me. Of course. Breathe in. Breathe. Come on. Breathe in. <sighs> Breathe out. <sighs> so. <sighs> All right. All right. Got anything strong behind the counter? No, I'm working. Why would I have any something strong? I mean, I have some You're, sort of cleaners, but because you need you need something stronger now. You need to calm those nerves. I think I'll be all right. But no, no, I I, I can give you descriptions of of each of them, uh, if it will help. Uh, they they were um they were uh, okay they were they were they were they were, they look um okay uh, uh, so, one sorry, of them. I kind of had to hijack because he was not doing anything. Uh, for that they had uh, okay one of them uh, was uh, uh kind of like a like a red scarf. And uh, kind of a kind of a surly look. He, he wore a uh, a green bandana. Uh, one of the other ones had uh, had a green hood. Uh, he had a, he had a bow, kind of like yours, uh, uh, Mister Slappy. As um, as as you know, hunters do. Yep, yes. yep, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other ones had uh, a metal black metal shoulder pauldrons, and uh, he had a he had a red uh, like a plaid bandana that he wore around his neck. Uh, there was there was a woman with them. She had uh, uh, big big axes. I think she might have been like a lumberjack. A lumbrous jack, maybe? That I wanna be don't want I wanna be inclusive. And then uh the last one, he um he had an eye patch and a really big thick black beard. What what was his name? Uh Bendel. Bendel was his name. Bendel Bendel. Um oh, Bendel something? I didn't get a last name. No surname, just his name was Bendel. Yeah. Uh I hope that helps. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been very forthcoming, my friend. Thank you. Don't. Is it is it all right if you do, do, don't don't tell the Lord that I um if this is what? the men tell tell the Lord what, my good sir. And he looks all at once relieved, all at once relieved by you basically ignoring the fact that uh, he might have sold gear to. These poachers of the white wood. He looks very, very relieved. But you've got some new information. And what would you guys like to do with that new information? How do you want to proceed? Do you have everything you need? Yeah, I we need. Take everything we need and uh, pay double, you know, leave a good tip. Okay. Uh, I guess back to the group. Yeah. Um. While uh me and uh, Farron are um uh, gallivanting around town looking for uh, a place to drink, mm, if we get to a bar, may I ask like the um the bartender if there's like any like places in the White Woods? So I'll be. I'll say um. Well, hi there. Uh, we're we're about to take off into the White Woods to take care of the the local uh, poaching issue for the Lord. Uh, you happen to know if there's like any uh, places out there? Uh, places? Yeah, yeah, like structures or huts or anything like that. Anything that's been there from before? Or I mean, there's a few. Hunting blinds that the Lord himself uses, but the yeah, people, like any... the citizenry, don't tend to enter into the Lord's woods. It wouldn't be proper. Right. So there's no, like, old, old mines or uh, um, fortresses or anything Seeing like that, that I no. personally have never entered the woods more than a hundred or so feet to take in the forest air... Some say it's it's very cleansing. Yes. All right. Well, appreciate that. Um, I couldn't answer your question. Is what I'm getting at. Right. Well, um, 
I need to get uh, semi-shit-faced. So he will offer you some mid-shelf alcohol, because yeah. that will get you semi-shit-faced. Not yeah. fully shit-faced. I'll, it's not I'll have, like, one, one mug. One Give me mug. a four save. Okay. <laughs> one whole mug. One mug of 151. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Whoa. 21. You're actually fine, which is yeah. surprisingly weird, but I like it. I like that, that is a thing. One plus eight to four. Okay. It's pretty right. good. That's pretty yeah. right. I don't, I he, don't hate he it. He built. He built. He is built. He is indeed yeah. built. Yeah. So you all rendezvous back together. You all rendezvous back together. What's the battle plan? What do you guys want to do? Well, Ranger, this is your show. Yep. How should we find oh. these poachers? Uh... The hmm, we need to, as I think we talked about it earlier, we need to ascertain, you know, where they're hunting, right? And then, yep, uh, we can lay a trap, we can lay in wait and uh, put some bait, is the best way to do it, uh, because uh, it's a pretty big forest, and uh, there's no way that we can just actively find these poachers and then. Assault their camp midday, slaughter them, glorious Mid combat. But well, midday wouldn't be a good idea. You want to go at night. The the, the poachers will be hunting more at night. They so want wait for to them be to come back. Of darkness to be able to uh, hunt without impunity. So why well, why would you want to hunt at night though? You can't you can't like see anything unless you got dark vision like me. You can still see enough with the moonlight. You know, oh right, it may be a forest, but it's not completely dark. And we've been there. If you've been to to, to the to the follow the the trails, if you've followed the the game, you know exactly where to to be and not be you know within what? the wind. And Twang, I'm sorry, I questioned you af right after I just gave you authority in this area. So, all right, what what's our first step? We we need to try and find where they're hunting. All right. From there, we'll, we should be able to find their camp. Poachers like to. Uh, and is there a, a method to, to finding that area, or should we just cast about in this wood? You need to find. Give me a knowledge. Give me a survival check, Wang, mm -hmm. which I believe you have. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope so. He's a ranger. <laughs> God's willing. I can, I can use my uh, profession of. No. Ranger. Yeah. If you want. Yeah, absolutely. Roll that. That'd be perfect. Love to see it. Hey. So a great way to find them, Twang, would be to find the trails that yeah. the deer themselves it's... take, right? Yeah. yeah that, that's, that's exactly what it was about Perfect. To say. Perfect. Um, we need to find the trails that are heavily used uh, and the, that uh, can be Should we bring the followed. horses? Uh, we can bring them to the outside, but uh, once inside the, for the forest, uh, that's a big yeah. no-no. Let's leave them stabled then. Yeah, the, the wood's right there. I don't think it'll take us too long to... Should I hang back? I'm not particularly good at stealth. The, if they're good hunters, they'll smell you before they see you anyways. So, All not right. because you stink. I know one that stinks. I'm the one that puts dirt to try and mask it, but don't worry. That's not my, 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 my... No, I assumed it was I the, the oils on my armor and the... It's... Everybody has their smell, and uh, if they if they smell something in, on the wind... All right. Uh, well... They'll know something's coming. Lead on. Assuming you gentlemen are ready. Yeah. Um, Sultan, do you want to... Explain what we heard, or what you heard, anyways. He told us uh, that already. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, and then Havala. Uh, he will also tell you of the uh, sisters. Hmm. I see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Havala, you have uh, you've attracted somewhat more attention than we were led to believe you would. If they weren't trying to kill me, this'd be kinda hot, I'll be completely honest. 
I made it weird again, didn't I? <laughs> yes. Okay. To the forest. <laughs> to yep. the forest! Aha! <laughs> God damn it. I absolutely <laughs> love you weird freaks. Love it. Love it. Um, love I'm going to keep an eye out in case they're still following us now that we've regrouped. It's like... You guys make your way from Castle White. It is not a long journey, but on foot, it takes you about three, three hours. Three to four hours from Castle White to actually reach the edge of the forest. Once at the edge of the forest, it is... It is an extremely thick, old-growth forest. The type of forest that hasn't been... They're not drawing lumber from it, simply being allowed to grow. You don't see any new-growth trees. It's just the old, not redwood style, but just an old-growth forest like you'll see sometimes in the rolling mountains of like the Appalachians, um, you know, just in the, the, the more wooded areas like that. But as you... Enter into the woods. You begin to search for trails, game trails, as it were. You know, looking for deer droppings, you're looking for hoof marks, uh, sections of trees where they've rubbed their uh, antlers against it to, you know, uh, to kind of like scratch off the, uh, what's the, what's the substance that they kind of scratch off? Velvet. The velvet, the, the velvet, velvet, right? And it takes you some time. Twang, but just uh, sorry, Wolf. Just as yeah. a side note, um, I try to make sure that we're upwind, not downwind. So perfect. So uh, upwind, but you do manage to find a trail that leads somewhere. And as you are following different trails of the deer, you still haven't seen any deer, but as you are traveling and looking and traveling and looking and traveling and looking, it goes on for a good six hours. It's actually starting to get late in the day. The sun is beginning to set, and you guys are likely starting to get a little tired. No actual in-game status effects at this point. But as you come to a rather uh, thicker part of the woods, all, it's, all of a sudden, this thick part of the woods kind of breaks into a small little clearing. And you see what appears to be an old campsite is the best way to describe it. You see what appears to be an old campsite. And what is perhaps slightly disconcerting about this particular campsite is that where the fire would have been built, there is instead the body of what appears to be a... It wasn't cleaned wasn't like a cleaned deer, but it is though someone cut the deer open, broke the rib cage apart, and then strewn the insides all around in like a circle. This deer has been desecrated, for lack of a better phrase. There is blood everywhere, and because you were upwind of it, downwind of it, you smelt it before you arrived on the scene. There was a smell of blood and viscera and mm. other bodily fluids. Yeah, when, when I started to smell it, it was visible that I mm -hmm. was now at the ready. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. I, without saying a, th a thing. Mm -hmm. Um uh pointing at uh both uh, uh hazala and uh, fenner to you know look around patrol around I'll, and i motion i'm gonna look inside yeah uh, yeah i would definitely like to make a perception check here and see if there's anything surrounding us or what anything. i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna bring you guys over Ooh. to a map. map so you can kind of see what we're talking about you should see an image of the deer. What is interesting is that I'm going to have you all make a perception check to see what interesting things you see. That's how the game works, apparently. I don't know. It's my first time. <laughs> I like the mentioned uh, symbol of being upwind of everything, or downwind of everything, excuse me. Blech. Um. Yeah. 
Is there any... Is there anything that I could recognize with how this thing has been, like, torn apart? Like, any kind of knowledge? What do you think? What knowledge do you want to attempt? I'm not going to tell you which one. I've got one in mind, but you tell me what you think would be interesting. It would either be religion or arcana. I think it's either some sort of divination. Um... Well, we've been fucking around with a lot of religious shit, so why don't I try knowledge religion? I like it. I like where your mind's at. I like where your mind's at. Um, I will give him guidance Ooh, using the cantrip. You're a fancy bitch. I know. Mm-hmm. What does you that give me? Plus, plus one. Plus one competence one. bonus. Perception, perception, on, perception. Uh, yeah. So 25 on the knowledge religion. Perception, 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 perception. Havala, Hmm. you are the one that notices, you're the one that notices that the only internal organ that was left in place inside the ribcage is the heart. Each lung has been draped outside on either side of of the corpse. The intestines have been drawn out and coiled into a circle between its hind legs. The liver is off to the left-hand side. The stomach is off to the right, so they kind of mirror each other. It's almost like someone took the body parts out and tried to make this kind of mirror of everything inside. It feels... It feels almost inquisical. Like someone was trying to understand how the inside of this creature worked. There's delicate... There's like a delicate kind of care with how these things, nothing looks like it was necessarily, I know I describe it as being strewn, but as you get closer and actually analyze it, it's very purposeful. Deliberate? deliberate. Thank you, Simon. I have very deliberate. a bad feeling about this. This looks like when my parents used to lay out ingredients for a spell. Your knowledge religion, Zoltan. This does not seem like a ritual. It does not seem any sort of religious or even cult-like. You have no idea. What this feels like right now, Zoltan. Does so anyone I can't do have an Arcana check? Does anyone have? I'll let you do an Arcana check. But does anyone have craft alchemy? No problem. Roll me an Arcana check. Let's see if you can figure it out. That was really hey. good. Twenty. Here's what you know, wow. Zoltan. This isn't magic. This is something that you've heard tell about. It's science which is just magic with extra steps <laughs> can i try knowledge engineering <laughs> fortunately no that wouldn't work um, however with that nat 20 you would notice that the gallbladder of this deer is missing of all the other body parts so meticulously and carefully laying out the the gallbladder is missing now what specifically that could be used for you're not sure it's unfortunate don't have the requisite skill to know but it's probably something scientific which is kind of like magic yeah um uh, yeah. it's, it's natural philosophy, guys. Um, why, why is your token, it's... what are you doing with your token? Because I couldn't move it. What do you mean you couldn't move it? Yeah, the one on the bottom there, I couldn't move it. Oh, on the map. So yeah, my, we, we don't have access my... to, to, to Oh, I it. put it on the map layer. Oops, my bad. I'm a goober. <laughs> <laughs> ah, roll 20, you sassy bitch. All right. Yes, so you can all move your tokens now, yes? Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. All right, perfect. Cool. So, uh, yeah, go yeah. ahead, continue. Uh, it's natural philosophy. It's not a... It's not magic, and it's not religion. Ah. So it's a peasant who intends to rise above his station. Well... Apparently. Then. Um, also... I admire I his know... pluck, but he's clearly chosen the wrong area to do it in. I don't know if it's relevant, but... He seems to have... They seem to have taken the gallbladder. 
So well, now this this dead deer will not have audacity. Uh, no, it will not be able to process fat when it eats. As well, it can well, still process fat. That's fair. I suspect the fat in leaves is not particularly. It's numerous. It's also also dead. What, you, what, the, what, what Red said. Yeah, would the would the gallbladder help someone else process food quickly? I'm no natural philosopher. Oh, would it make wait 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 what if it's if it's a gallbladder, is it full of audacity and then you eat it and then you become braver? I it don't couldn't work like that. Hmm. Uh Mr. DM, uh, is there a way for me to determine um, how long it would have been dead? Probably the yes. survival. You can do a survival check or a heal check. One. I'll let survival I'll, do it. I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, survival do it for me. You know what? Several hours. Hmm. Maybe three or four at most. As I'm poking about in the carcass, like. This is fairly fresh. And as you mention fairly fresh, fresh uh -oh. way, you hear a screaming. All of you hear a screaming coming from directly ahead of you, past the deer. You just hear this blood curdling, ah, just a man unhinged screaming. And you hear that sound of someone like running through the brush. You can hear them hitting leaves. Leaves are smacking them in the face. That flip, 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 rustle, rustle, flip, 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 rustle, rustle, rustle. And a man breaks the thick, dense tree line to the north and comes running directly towards you guys. He has what appears to be a morning star clenched, not at the ready, just he's holding it up very high on the neck of the handle. And he's just running. And what you notice is that he is blood jacketed, covered in blood. His face has blood splattered all over it. His clothing is stained in blood. Despite all of that, you can see that he has a red plaid, red and black plaid bandana around his neck. And he comes running. And as he's looking back over his shoulder as he breaks the tree line. And by the time he looks forward, it's too late. He trips, falls face first into the opened carcass, the opened cavity of the deer. Drops his weapon, puts, pushes himself up, looks at it, and just continues to scream. Despite being covered in blood, you can see that this man is ghostly pale. Like he has seen the very devil himself uh as he's uh you know in the guts i back up uh to take cover so that uh whatever he's running from as a little bit more uh uh you know a little bit more uh distance to cover yeah uh, i would also like to just stealth as well and like get up behind like this log if i can mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. baron readies his weapon and just steps out ready to face whatever comes out of the brush behind the man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. the man wanna... continues to scream for 10 seconds 20 seconds um 30 seconds 40 seconds uh, before before any of that happens uh i'm gonna cast daze on him I like that. He stops screaming. Just kind of blank his mind a little bit so that he's... He stops screaming. He actually, like, stumbles up and out of the deer, falling on his backside. Brings his knees up to his chest. Starts to rock back and forth next to the deer. Can I see anything like that was following him out of the the thick forest? Nothing. You see nothing. nothing. Okay. What did you see? 
<laughs> Can I use detect magic to see if there's any uh magical enchantment on him or any such? He is effect? not magically enchanted. Okay. But through his ah ooh ee, his noises that he's making, you oh. hear him say, "We shouldn't." We shouldn't have gone after the fawn. Shouldn't have gone after his fawn. Not ever after the fawn. Stupid, 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 stupid. And then he just goes back to this quiet, just broken man whimpering. Does he look injured? Like, no. And you notice okay. with a quick once over of him that none of the blood on him is his. Ranger, can we follow his trail through the forest? Oh, that's going to be fairly easy. Yes. Um. Well, I don't know how to do it. Can you show me which how to show show me? Let's go. Yeah. Uh. Strange as this is, I think we should just go where he came from. I need everyone in this moment to give me a will save, please. Uh oh. Is it against a fear effect? It is not. Uh oh. Uh, it is a mind affecting effect. Mind affecting effect. It is mind affecting compulsion. Damn! Zoltan, yeah. you're good. Twang, you're not good. Faran, you're not good. Avala, you are also not good. What? Ooh. Yeah. Ah. Here's, uh, the, here's, let me explain what happens. Hold on. I have something I can do if. Oh. Do, you how... to, do you want me to explain the fact first or after? Uh, does it look like Havala got close? <laughs> I'm I'm at where I am on the map. I'm behind that log there. No, no, no. I mean, got close to making it. Uh oh. Ooh. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen yet, so how would you determine that? I'm being cheeky, because I'm the game master. They call me Cheeky Wolf. <laughs> I cast <laughs> Timely Inspiration on uh, Havala. Okay. Ooh, you get a plus one uh, competence bonus uh retroactively to that skill check or to Bala, that, you uh, have passed the check so, yeah <laughs> all right so the other two that failed mm -hmm. that's us you lose all sense of direction oh. now what i mean okay. by that is you're smart you're travelers you know usually which way is north you can look at the rising of the sun and it just when you think about it twang and Ferrand. You're, it's like you know which way is north, but you, maybe you start walking it, and then suddenly you you realize you're walking south. You just you just you, you very easily get turned around. Is mm -hmm. the best way to so, describe that. He came from the east, right? Or was it the west? Came from the south, Wait, didn't he? The west. No. I, I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. This has never happened to me before. Like, the moon should be there, right? But why is it there? I usually have a good sense of where people have come from, a tactical sense. But what, what, what do you guys mean? North's that way. Okay. Are you sure? Because I would have, I would have bet you that it was that way. It was, no. It, how did you? Uh, it, I think it, detect magic. You've, you've both been affected. As you cast detect magic, you Favorite see thing. that there are. I want you to imagine like fireflies. Mm -hmm. You see little fireflies of magic all around you all around you they are they're just it's just twirling around 
and you notice that these little fireflies of magic, they are, they are like absorbing into your, they're like absorbing into your, your skin, your nose, just making themselves at home. This guy matches the description of the, um, one of the poachers, right? He does yeah. indeed. Yep. Uh, oh, yeah. So while I'm trying to figure out where we're supposed to be going, uh, Farron actually steps over and just coup de grace him with his... Yeah, so this guy is just whimpering, knees up to his chest. You walk up, take your blade, drag it across his wait, neck. Wait, 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 wait. Blood no, I just spills said it, out. Uh, yeah, I just set it on his, th on his throat and then let the gravity do the rest. Yeah, and then just... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he just right. blood spills out, and he goes to grab onto it, gurgling, and then just slumps over uh, onto the ground. God, mm, God yeah. damn! One body, probably for the best. Mm. Now mm, that uh, one you, poacher. You okay there, Havala? Or well, I mean, it didn't seem all that necessary. It didn't seem like he was going anywhere. But now we're sure. Did you want to save him later? Did you want to kill him later? Done oh. done is done. Let's no, I, move I on. Just, look, I'm not uh, saying killing him is not the right thing to do. It's just we didn't need to. How else are we going to weigh him for our gold reward? In ropes. Chain. Did you not hear the king say that? What the king does, what the king does with him is his deal. But it... did you think we were coming out here to ask them to stop the poaching? No, I understand that killing them is mildly an option and necessary, but I was just doing trying like time up here, leave them, and come back about and get it, them. Maybe? Would it have made your, then? So it would have made your conscience feel better if we'd allowed the Lord to kill him instead of us. Yes, because well, he's allowed to rule his land yeah. how he wishes. Well, your conscience can be clear. I killed him and you didn't. Right. Uh, now, does one of you know which way he came from? That way. As he points in the opposite direction. No. No, no, oh, no he you points in the right direction. Oh, okay. It's, it's just, uh, it's Ash and uh, Twang. Okay. Or shade, or whatever. Uh, let's go this way. Right. Like clearly uh, confused. You I, have I, no like... sense of direction, but you can still see tracks, right? Yeah. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. But yeah. I like that he's leaning into it. Point to a track, and I will oh. follow the the. Oh, the track. Okay, so that makes sense. But I wish you could. Tracks are there. Let's follow the tracks. 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 Um, I'm gonna make mention of guys. There's a I did detect magic, and there's like a weird thing going on around here. It's like they're like fireflies or something. I'm not sure how far it goes. Can I see where it ends? Like, is that possible? But you're seeing all of this pollinated dust, firefly like stuff, and it's all coming in the direction that the tracks came from. Oh, okay. It looks like it's following the tracks that Twang pointed out. Um, I don't know if it ends, but it's probably not going to get better. It might just stay the same, though. Eh, things I can't see can't hurt me. There is a deep, from the diaphragm howl that echoes. The trees themselves shake comes from the direction. It sounds humanoid, but bestial. It's like a ah, And now we see why there's a weight in gold. And uh, Farron looks excited. He pull, pulls out his, his uh, claymore. <laughs> to my legend. Uh, to our legend. <laughs> to, 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 to our Gentlemen. legend. Gentlemen. <laughs> But you oh. all hear shouting, screaming. Each of you would recognize the sounds of what sounds like a fight going on. Maybe a football, 300, 400 feet 
directly north, south, east, west, just in the direction of the tracks. Yeah, yeah, the tracks in which that the where they're uh, coming from. Yeah, right. Farron is practically like bouncing. He starts to like, do, 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 just like yeah. starts to speed up, headed in that direction. And as you yeah. guys take off in that direction, that my friends is where we'll continue our adventure because it's a one shot. So it is what it is. There you go. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a great moment for me to be like, and that my friends will we'll pick up next session. That's such a terrible thing to do. But no, we're just gonna keep going on. So yep. as you guys march forward, eventually you come to kind of an old, what looks to be an old road. You can see that to the right and the left of this old road, the trees have overgrown it. But the scene you see before you is as follows. You see the remainder of these bandits, these poachers that you had been told about by the town guard. One of them, a woman that wasn't described, is lying on her back. You can see blood pooling out from a deep wound in her stomach, and she is doing her best to staunch it. You can see her hand going up and down, but it's doing nothing. It's like it's like it's like a child trying to hold back the water from a faucet, right? The man with the one eye is yelling at a very finely dressed man who has a book out in, in, in front of him. He appears to almost be reciting from it, like he's trying to, you know, you are healed, you know, be gone demons kind of style. Like he's trying to yes. almost use it like it's like his words are weapons. And he is shouting at them to get back and that they don't understand. They should never have come here. They're not, they don't belong here. He needs to take care of him. He only attacked because he was afraid. Only attacked because he was afraid. That is what this man is screaming. But the man with the black bushy beard and the eye patch is shouting and screaming at this man. You get out of the way. We'll fucking kill that beast. Look what he did to her. Look what he did to Robot over there. He's missing half his arm. We'll fucking gut him and we'll chop his horns off and we'll use him for fucking fertilizer. I don't goddamn. You get out of the way, man. You get out of the fucking way. And you can see behind this man, there is a cave and you can hear kind of a low growling echoing out from this cave, but you don't readily see anything inside the cave at this point. How would you like to proceed? Poachers! <laughs> and as you... Can I, can I try to stop him? As you charge forward, it's impossible to stop him. Okay. Right. The, the sound of combat music begins, and uh, that is your sign to roll for initiative. And we're going to drop into some combat, so it's going to be good. Right. How the hell do I do initiative again? Ah... There we go, button. Yeah. Well, of course. Man, I've been rolling well tonight. I'm not used to it. Swing, you get advantage on initiative. Who? Swing. Hey. Oh. You rolled nice. initiative twice, and it's to take the higher roll. Dick move. Damn. <laughs> All righty then. All righty then. Let me roll for some initiative for these bad boys. And hashtag no spoilers. We're just going to call this one FH. So that it doesn't ruin the surprise. All right. Lord Farquaad. Lord Farquaad. All right. Twain, as is tradition, you are up first. And it's tradition because, well, you went first and it's our first combat. <laughs> so now it's tradition. Yep. As is tradition. Um... So with uh, Fern, I was also getting ready for, you know, yeah, the charge. 
Um, but I uh, will just move up to be like on the side of the, the rocks and um, perfect 30 feet. I am beautiful. Yeah, perfect 30 feet. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, perfect 30 feet. And uh, I will um, um, uh, relieve her of her misery. Ooh. Or at least try. You're gonna put the one that's bleeding out out of her misery? Yeah. Well, she's on the ground. You know, she's bleeding out. Oh yeah. She's in a bad spot. Yeah. Single attack roll. Make it happen, man. Uh, Not hard to hit. So. Hopefully. Isn't if she's prone? Doesn't she get a bonus to her AC? She does, but her armor has been torn to shreds, so she's getting a minus for being unable to move. She's basically paralyzed right now. So she's okay. she's she's like an AC ten to hit. That's a net well. one. You hate to see it. You <laughs> yeah. rolled roll to confirm. Roll to confirm. You hate to see it. You do have a hero point if you want to spend it to re-roll no, that you attack. You said we were playing with anti-hero. That's what yeah, I said. Rules. Well, yeah, you know, I I was trying to give you one, but everyone rules lawyers me, so I guess you get nothing symbol. <laughs> no, no, uh, you are doing anti-hero rules, so roll roll it again to confirm to see if it's critical miss. Uh, okay. It is not. The arrow strikes. So here's what happens. The arrow, like the hand she's trying to hold, she lifts it up for a second. The arrow strikes her hand and she just starts screaming in pain. She's like, ah, 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 like, why? It's like that. It's like that Keenan Peel sketch where he's like, you must kill me. And he like starts stabbing him. He's like, no, no, use the gun. It's just it's fucking hilarious. Shoots him in the leg. I don't know. It's it's good. She's having a bad time. Um, uh, Zoltan, you're up next. <laughs> um, I am going to start my war chant, which is a dwarven uh, scholar uh, bardic performance. Um, up to four people that can hear me uh, get the abilities of one of my combat feats. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me grab my combat feats. Um, um. You got you all get arcane strike. Ooh, what's that? I need to. I don't know. What that Plus is. one to damage. Attack and damage. And right. they're uh, huh? Attack and damage or just damage? Just damage. Uh, it's plus one to damage. Uh, and they're magic. Nice. Very good. Anything else, Sultan? You gonna move? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a so asking to enable as well. Okay. Oh, wait. I'm 25. Ferrand. Uh, I'm going to charge that woman who looks like she's a... That lady. And I hit her with my giant sword. She looks very surprised at how quickly you move in full plate. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. That's a hit. That is a hit. Uh, are you doing strength and a half for your damage? Uh, n no. Then that should be six damage plus. So that should be 10 damage. So you charge forward, slashing down into her backside. And she groans as she flips around sort of reactively to like swinging but doesn't quite connect uh and now she's ready to fight you but she looks very hurt very very hurt avala you're up next mr party boy yes uh uh-huh um bro uh do, 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 do. Isn't there like a thing i can do special like a special action type thing to like Keep my defense up or something. What are you You're trying to do? You're gonna attack exactly? defensively. 
I get what defensively? You can attack defensively. I think you take a minus two to your to your attack roll, but you get a plus two to your AC. Uh, so it's mm. minus four to attack, but a ah. plus two to AC. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, and that would be a what to how to do that. I would have to attack to do that. You'd have to be a fighting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So I can't really get that far and do things. I could move thirty feet. Um. To run, it's a full action? Yes. Okay. So to go to the 120 feet that I could with my 30-foot movement, it'd be... Okay. Um, yeah, I'm thinking... I just run... Uh, straight... Like, when it says a straight line, it has to be, like, a straight line. Correct. Like, as if on the mat. Okay. Yep, so you just take your ruler, and you just go straight out from your oh. ruler. Could I go, like, straight to here? Yeah, that's a straight line. Okay, cool. Um, you can also charge that spot if you want to attack. Charge allows you to double move. Oh, okay. Um, you know what? I got a better idea. Uh, fuck. How could I do this? I'll move all the way up here using my 30 foot of movement. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use my Wind Blast ability. Ooh. Yes. Um, Halava is going to take a, uh, a position like this. Uh, pull forward. And as he pulls back, it you're going to feel like a barometric shift in pressure as it all accumulates on his fist. And he's going to uh, do a 30 foot line right in front of him. And it's going to act as if it was a bull rush. Ooh. Yeah. Are you going for Bendel? Gonna... Yeah, oh, Bendel. Right one eye. All right. All right. Give us a combat maneuver check. Okay. Using your spells bonuses as the bonus. That is sweet. Yeah. It is a um, wisdom and uh, caster level. So I've got that set up, I believe. It's a God, plus five. I really hope this works. That is unfortunate. A that is a 10. That is not great. He still has. He still has to do a uh, CMD or whatever, however that works. So you're going against his CMD, and unfortunately, it's not good enough to affect him. So it's just like his, he like turns around, you see his beard kind of do this. And then he's just like, you just sneeze on me? <laughs> you sure? That yeah, why don't you come over here and hit me for it? <laughs> hit me for it. I just might. Yeah. I want to. I want to goad him. Yeah, that sounds right. I want to. I like him that. That was good. That was good. Him. You breathe awkwardly on him. You know. Yeah. I go to. I go to brain, attack but... the uh, attack the orc. Not one. Mm -hmm. You lightly caress him. The orc is uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the woman spins around. Now you notice that her axes are very unique. Do you have profession soldier or anything like that for us? Um, no. Okay. No. I don't have that many skill points. So I'm gonna give this one to you for free. You recognize these axes as being unique to a region northward, north mm -hmm. of the Thralls, north of the kingdom of Delconfiri, the Protectorate of Gorigzum. The Protectorate of Gorigzum. They have their mercenary fighters. They wield a very special. It's uh, it's a difficult axe to wield. It's like a full size axe, not like hand axes, but they wield them two hand, like they double, like double wield them, dual wield. Right, right. They are hooked. So they can be used to perform tripping maneuvers. So one of their things is to trip you and then bring the other axe down. And it's sort of like right. a constant flow where they're swinging them, keeping you off your feet. It allows them to fight multiple enemies at once because they keep them off balance and on the, on the ground. So she is going to attempt an attack. And the way that these hooked axes work is that if she hits you with an attack, she can make a free combat maneuver attempt to trip you a bite at a minus two her normal cmd all right all right so she's going to attempt an attack roll uh against you we'll see what happens that's 25 i think that's a hit that will hit me yep. all right so she's gonna get 1d6 plus three so you're gonna take five damage and then she's gonna attempt a combat maneuver check 27 uh that'll beat my 19 CMD. so what yeah. happens is she slashes down catching you in the shin um, and then kind of pulls the, the blade up, dragging it up the back of your of your calf. It doesn't quite go through your armor, but you can feel it denting the armor and kind of digging in. 
As she catches the back of your knee, she pulls it out, bringing you to the ground, where she simultaneously brings the other axe down in an attempt to attack you as well, uh, which now is at a plus four because you're prone. Uh, 23? I'll still hit. All right, so you take an additional f only four points of damage. She just kind of clings off your armor. It does more bruising than anything else. Gerton, the keeper. Gerton, he says, no, no, stand back. You, you don't understand. It's not his fault. It's it's not any of their fault. It, it is it is just simply, he's a misunderstood. Please, please, there's no need for violence. That is all he's going to do. Bendel looks back at him and goes, I'll get to you later. You! Red scaly bitch! I'll show you what being sneezed on feels like. And he's going to charge forward with his mm -hmm. greatsword. Uh, mm -hmm. Smaller than your claymore. Um, something, something mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. compensating. But he's going to attempt to attack. Attack you, good sir. He's going to attempt to attack you. And uh, let's see what happens. Uh, I would like you to roll the attack. Uh, but I do have a thing that lets me do a thing. Okay, it's a 15. Pretty sure that misses. Can I let him attack me? I mean, you could say I'm going to choose to lean into the attack. I mean, if you want to, yeah. There's nothing in the rules that says you can't be like, I want him to hit me. All right. Yeah, I want him to hit me. All right, he's going to hit uh, you. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna use redirection. Okay. Um, as an immediate action, I can tempt a reposition or trip attack against a creature that uh, threatens me and attacks me. Okay. Um, if the combat and maneuver is successful, the attacker is sickened for a round. Reflex, uh, it's a reflex save to negate. Uh, and he is sickened for one round plus one additional higher levels, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I get to either reposition or trip him. That's pretty great. Yeah, um, I'd like to uh, attempt to uh, trip him. Okay. I think I go to attacks and just do a CMB. regular... CMB. CMB check, it. yep. Okay, cool. Eh. That is good enough. So he charged yeah. for it. Now, does his attack still hit then? Um, Based on that? Because I'm not familiar with that one. I don't know. I'm going to reread this. Ability. You know what? I'm going to make a ruling. It still hits. Okay. 13 damage. Take it. Love it. But as he hits <laughs> into you, you you push forward and sweep his legs. So you basically, yeah. you take it as an opening and he's like, whoa! And he trips to the ground. So now yeah. he is on the ground next to, it's absolutely perfect. I like how, like, literally <laughs> the fight <laughs> is mirroring itself. That is absolutely yeah. beautiful. Um, how I mentioned it doing is he ran at me. Mm -hmm. um, the axe came down. I caught it in my shoulder, grabbed his arm, and I... Yes. This man here who's wielding uh, a sword and a shield, uh, the man off to the right who is bleeding from his arm, his shield is kind of limp on his right arm, so he's not really wielding it. It's just attached to his tethered, tethered, like his tattered arm. He takes his sword high and charges the man with the book. And the man says, no, 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 you don't understand. And as he charges... The man had simply readied an action to step out of the way, and then he charges into the cave where you guys hear the most guttural, visceral growling and screaming, and what sounds like the man being torn apart. Just, oh god, oh, okay, oh, oh, no, oh Jesus, oh, <laughs> just a horrible guttural growling and screeching noises, and then chunks of flesh come flying out of the cave and land on the ground um, next to the woman who's still bleeding out. Um, that's going to come right out of your pay. Right out of your pay. All right. No, we need them to be full of blood. So wait, no, oh. God, I can use much money. All right. Um, I need whoever's feeling lucky to tell me high or low. Hi. Low. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, Is it high? Yep. Good thing he said hi. All right. Uh, I'm going to let you make the choice then, Zoltan. Do you want things to get interesting? Or do you want one more round before they get interesting? <laughs> we need one more round before things get interesting. All right. One more round. So the gurgling and the guttural grunting from inside the cave continues. Uh, Whatever is in there is still feasting upon the lower torso of that man. Uh, next up is Tim. Tim's going to turn and be... And you hear him... You hear him actually say aloud, Ha! Ranger duel! And he's going to start shooting at <laughs> Twang. And uh, he's very, he seems like overly excited about this. 22 and 21. 
Both hit. Oh, yikes. All right, 1d8 plus 3 plus 1d8 plus 3. All right, you take two hits for 18 damage. Thunk, thunk! And he goes, oh. ha! Tag! You're it, bitch! And um, that is his turn. Uh, uh, Twang. What? Bendel is also uh, sickened. Yeah, he's, 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 he, you literally, like, he, as you, as you leaned into him and swept his legs, you also need him in the junk. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the thing. I just wanted to let you know. It's beautiful. All right. Twang, you're up next. Um, sorry, I have a cat that's on my desk playing with stuff I that she shouldn't completely be. completely understand. <laughs> kitties are kitties. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Um, all right, ranger duel. All right, ranger duel. <laughs> I will also fire twice at the the ranger. I love that journey for you. Um, two, six, one, second one. Holy shit balls! Uh, let's see here. So we got oh, rapid shots. So would be the yeah. So, so yeah, forget the first roll and thwip. Okay. So five damage. So, just, just and the, the, the second twelve damage. Thing. Both arrows strike him, and he's like, Dunk. "Ow, tag! I'm it," uh, is what he <laughs> says, and uh, and then goes to draw some more. What and you... he notices it's his arrows. Oh, did you? Yes, he <laughs> pulled your arrows out and fired the bag. He's like, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> I like that a lot, actually. Zoltan, you're up next. All right. Um, I am That's, going. That was good. Simple. That's good. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I can get to here and I as a swift action I'm going to activate my uh, arcane strike mm -hmm. and then I'm going to oh, I forgot to I forgot to buff me with the combat buff because you're oh, doing yeah. a song aren't you so that's two uh, more damage, by the way. I don't know. I I'm doing arcane. I'm doing. I will add two more damage. I don't damage have. Perfect. I don't have inspire. Uh, courage. Yeah, we've got arcane strike, don't we? Yeah, it's plus one. Plus one to both. Um, damage, just the damage. damage. Just damage. Yeah. I took thirteen from Bendel, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that'll be eight points of damage if twenty-one hits. Which one are you shooting? Uh, I'm swinging at oh, this axing. one. Oh, axing. You're axing her a question? That yes. is seven damage as you ax her a question. Eight damage. Eight damage. She looks at your uh, axe and says, Pitiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Ferran, you are on the ground, but still pretty violent. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Baron is going to roll five feet and then stand up so he doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity. I like it. Stand up, but he, then he, he holds out his his uh, points at her with his uh, claymore and goes, a worthy opponent. Ah. Excellent. <laughs> I love that. And then that. grins. She looks a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie. It's like, oh, <laughs> usually people <laughs> freak out. That was good. That was good. All right. Uh, Havala, you're up next. Yes, okay. Um, um, what do I do? Uh, this guy's on the floor. He'd be easier for me to hit him, right? Plus four to your attack. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, cool. Um, I would like... <laughs> nice, <to> nice. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> God, I get... I, uh... So, my channel ability, um, yes. is that just people I choose or any living thing? So if you have selective channel, you can exclude certain individuals. If you do not have selective channel, then when you channel anyone in the radius would get healed. Oh, I f that was something I was maybe you could take. God damn it. All right. That's fine. All right. Um, or maybe yeah. it's not. We'll find out. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I will go ahead and just... By the way, that woman finally bleeds out. 
<laughs> nice. Gurgle, uh, gurgle, dead. Gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. Um, I will. You guys just keep shooting each other's air like the same arrows back at each other until one of you dies. <laughs> That's exactly what I hope happens. Simple. That's fucking great. I want to cast um, Shadow Trap Ooh. on Bendel. Okay. Here. All right. May I make a suggestion? Yes. Five foot step back so that you're not provoking. Okay, if they hit me and provoke an opportunity attack. If you Do cast a spell, if them? you cast a spell in, next to him, unless you cast defensively, it provokes an attack of opportunity from him. And even uh -huh. though he's on the ground, he can swing at you. If he hits, then you have to make a concentration check equal to f fifteen plus the damage dealt. Okay. Which you don't want to do. But you yeah, can just no. take a five foot step yep. back. You take literally a five foot step into any of the three squares behind you, and you can okay. do it at your leisure. I will just. Uh... I'll just punch him a lot. <laughs> okay. I mean, you do have monk levels. Yeah, I'll do flurry of blows. <laughs> do it. Yeah, you get a plus four to attack. He's got decent AC, but, you know. Yeah. Um, so, uh... Five's not going to do it. Fuck. Six yeah, will five, do it. Uh, plus four on that five would be nine. That's not going to do it, but that 24 will hit him. Absolutely. And then... Uh, the Yeah. Plus seven. Uh, so that's, plus, that's six damage. And Perfect. then, oh, I can swift to do the arcane thing. So it'd be uh, eight. Nice. Or, I mean, seven. Done. You, you yeah. punch him in the face, in his stupid face, and his one good eye. And he's like, why would you do that? It's my one good eye. And he's just, he's, I mean, that's probably why you would do it. Next yeah. up is Helena, who is going to five foot forward and yep. really seems to be in her element, even though she's a little nervous. First attack is going to be against you, good sir. Who? You. She misses. Oh, she misses. Her second attack goes against the dwarf. Does a 17 oh. hit you? Uh, yes. Let me right. double check. Good news. Yeah, bad. 15. You take okay, that's five good. damage, and she's going to attempt to trip you. Will that provoke uh, an attack of opportunity? 13 does not. know. she has improved trip. Okay. And I'm pretty sure 13 doesn't beat your CMD. Uh, where is 17? No. Yeah, I can almost guarantee. Yeah, so she goes to wrap it around your leg like she did him, but you're a sturdy dwarf and you can't, <laughs> you, right. you're, you're hard to trip. So, I'm pretty sure dwarves get a bonus against trip attempts too. I no think I do. Yeah, yeah, it's a plus four to trip uh, and bull rush because they're like stocky and hard to knock over. They're stout. Uh, I might have. Uh, they have wide bases. Yeah, <laughs> huge tracts of land. Uh, she I might now... have taken a uh, alternate racial trait to get rid of that, though. She now looks a little uncomfortable because that didn't go as she planned. Uh, Garretton is turning back and is now raising his book uh, towards the cave, and he is he is just going, "Fawn, Fawn, calm down! No, no, you, no! It, it it wasn't your father! I I promise! I promise it wasn't your father! No, no, no! This this is all a huge, huge." Horrible misunderstanding. Please, please, Fawn, Fawn, no, 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 no. Take, take, breathe, breathe. Remember, in through your nose, out through your weird mouth, in through your nose, out through your... And you see her. Well, well, is he? Well, is father won't need answers to questions. Well, is father. And, uh, the man with the book looks nervous. Dare I say, the man with the book looks nervous. Bendel, Bendel is going to risk it to get the biscuit. He's going to take a move action to stand up, provoking attacks of opportunity from the big yeah. claymore wielding man and the man with the punchy fists. Yep. Seventeen, unfortunately, is a miss. Oh no, he's still um, prone as he gets up. That's a, that's a hit. That, oh, that's a hit for sixteen <laughs> damage. Fuck me. Will, that's I will that also, plus one. Uh, plus plus I'll one. Also punch him. Yeah, yeah. Seventeen. No, I've, I've yeah. got the plus one. That's I've already got the plus one assigned. It's fantastic. Oh. Twenty-five for five. Uh, Ooh, he gets up. Uh, Twenty-nine. But he ain't happy. All right. Um. So I get an attack of opportunity as well. You did. Okay. Um. I have additionals on my attack of opportunity. Um. Uh. Where? Where is? Where is this? This is. Apparently, he gets a... four per turn. Yeah, I do. <laughs> 
Uh, this is and how I built my character, and I'm actually one of the one of the uh, um, combat feats that I took that I can give you guys is uh, gives another uh, attack of opportunity. Hey, does oh. cleave work on attacks of opportunity? <laughs> it's not. I um, not. Uh, he needs to make a reflex save. Um, two plus three. Uh, DC thirteen. He's good. Okay, uh, so he's not flat-footed from my unbalancing counter. Well, he looks bloodied, and like he's probably <laughs> going to die soon, but he's going to lean into it, and he screams, I didn't even want to stay here. I didn't even want to stay here! I just can't figure out which way is west! God damn it! I meant east! Fuck! And then he's going to just do a cleave, and he's going to try to hit both of you. So he's going for the Monk Man first. This is with minus two. 25 is a hit. Ooh, yeah. Sucks to suck. Um, um, I'll, I'll do redirect. Hilarious. Uh, again. I, I really want you to trip him again. Um, 13 damage to you, by the way. Okay, I'm going to try to reposition him. Ooh, if you reposition him over here, then he can't cleave, which is hilarious. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's a 5 over his CMD. Uh, I get to push him out of my distance? Yes. Okay. Uh, attacks, uh, CMB. Uh, 20. It's not going to do it, actually. It's not going to um, do it. His CMD is higher than that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then. <laughs> oh. So a second attack is going to be on you, good sir, Mr. Yep, yep. Oh, that cling is. off your armor. Cling off your armor. All right. Um, you said second, yeah. one more round. Yep. We did say that. So the good news is not this round, but next round. All right. So Tim <laughs> is going to take both arrows you shot into him. Go to draw them. However, here things here's where things get funny. Because every time you shoot a wood arrow, it starts to maybe not work as good um, because, you know, you've pulled them out of yourself. So tell me high or low. High or low. Hi. 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 All right. First arrow is going to go off. First arrow is going to go off. But it goes wide. High or low on the second arrow? High. Goes low. Oh, All right. He's really low. <laughs> All right. He's going for it again. But 14. Misses. Both of them go wide. Swing, swing. And he just goes fucking stupid arrow can't shoot back at me that's not fair <laughs> that's what he screams it's supposed to be a proper ranger duel you're cheating god i hate ranger duels playing it's your turn <laughs> i methodically place my two arrows to you know to show him like all right <clears throat> ranger will duel this <laughs> ranger duel this oh Good news, bad news for him. As as you draw back on your bow, you fire. He's going to draw from his hip quiver. You pin his hand to his stomach. He's like, fucking cheating, Oof. motherfucker. And then the second arrow takes him in the neck. And he's just... <laughs> and then he just collapses over and begins to bleed out. Absolutely fantastic. Ugh, Ranger duels. <laughs> Ranger duel. <laughs> flip, 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 flip. Love it. Uh, Zoltan, uh, you're up next. Uh, I'm going to I like attack that. her. So what I was going to have happen is if you cr guessed correctly, his arrow was going to explode in his face because it was going <laughs> to break. I was really hoping, but it's all good. Uh, as your turn comes up, um, Farron is like, I can handle this one. Uh, Do what you will with okay. that. <laughs> Farron is like, no, 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 I'll fight him. No, 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 no. A worthy opponent. No, no, no. Um, she well, felt real I mean, confident she, up front <laughs> when she tripped you. Go ahead, Zoltan. She's yeah. she's right there. And yeah, and I'm, listen, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just. I would Farron have doesn't to want use... you to, but you <laughs> you do what you want to do. They're actually um, just saying right, this while she's standing right ten, there. Ten. Uh, can I get to this guy? I mean, you're standing on top of him right now. So yeah. what are you trying to do? Trying to like go around like this? Yeah, I can go around, right? Do you want to yeah, provoke you... attacks of opportunity? You could five foot step and be in range. Yeah, I'm not. So I was here. Stand up right there. Yeah, just five foot step to here. Oh yeah, that'll work. Now you. Yeah, 
That's perfect. In the person's space? Yeah, okay. but if I move if I move here, it's only 10 feet. You're, step, and... you're standing on top of Bendel if you do that. Bendel is in this hex right here. Can you not see him? He wasn't. He was oh. in this hex right here. Oh, weird. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. Uh, when you Sorry, yeah, he was he was here. Yours. That's Okay. What, roll that's 20 must be doing it. the roll 20 thing. Okay. Roll 20 uh, does roll 20. Oh, roll 20. Mm. Womp, womp, womp. I should use Foundry. Womp, womp, womp. I agree. Disagreed. All right. Womp, we got a womp. nine. Womp, womp goes wide. Farad, you have a flanking bonus. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Farron rolls his Farron, like pauses, rolls his shoulders, and he's like, my turn. And then swings his claymore. And proceeds to whiff it. Just laugh, ah, wing, and she's just like clanging, knocked away. Even with a with the uh, the uh... plus two to attack on flanking, it's all flanking gives you. Yeah. Oh, this, so, yeah. So that would make it a fourteen still misses. You are up next. If you oh. want to punch, you five foot step to your left. You get a plus two. Literally, Zoltan is the master of strategy because tactics, <laughs> because he's literally put himself in the best position possible for flanking. Yeah. Um, That's why he's the brains of the outfit. He's dead, so... Um, he's on the floor. Ooh. How bad is that uh, soldier person looking? Which soldier that, person? Uh, I, don't uh, think we, I, don't, I think we one did eight damage to sure. This, this one. This Her? One. Not bad. Yeah. She's gotten hit like once. Yeah, maybe okay. twice. Um, this guy still, is, is he's, in the he's fight. literally bleeding out. Oh, he looks bad. He looks he looks okay. like he's like I could do this all day, but the day is, <laughs> is old and it's gonna end soon. Right. So, yeah, it's like um, almost nighttime for him. Time to go sleepy <laughs> sleep. I would like I to just do 99. a. Um, I go ninety nine simple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna do a flurry of blows. Yeah. Um, Man, might, might I recommend? I put to hear it. Plus two to attacks. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna do it on this lady though. You can. Um, the lady though. Uh, yeah, go for it. No, no. no. <laughs> Sharon is like, no, I got this. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll do a five foot step doesn't. there. <laughs> um, and then it's, clearly it's not. He's having a good fight. <laughs> oh. Okay. Right. Uh, do I help him or not? God damn it. No, you're good. Okay. You do you, buddy. You do you. Um, yeah. I you do what you think your character would do. But Farron is telling you. I got this. Just her and me. Yeah. I, just, I, I, I just don't. <laughs> and the dwarf behind, and I'm. Just, it's all good. Position. Why is reposition not on here? What the hell? I'm trying to find. Ah, oh, there it is. <laughs> um. I've got a climbing kitty. Ooh. Climbing kitty playing with wires. A CC, a climbing kitty. A CCC, a cute climbing kitty. Triple threat. Uh, I'm not going to do a five foot step. I'm instead going to do. Can I flurry blows and replace the attacks with uh, maneuvers? Yes. Okay. I'm going to do that. Um, I don't know I'm if going... rules is written you can, but every time I've played a monk, I have because it seems cool. So yeah. rule a cool, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, is he still on his ass, Baron? Uh, no, he stood up. Okay. Um, yeah, remember first... when we hit him super hard? But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um,. I'm going to attempt to um, reposition him mm -hmm. first. Okay. So, ah, uh, seventeen. God oh. damn it! Uh, and the second one, I will just try and trip him again. All right. Twenty-one. Uh, that'll play. Okay. That'll play. I knock him on his ass. That'll play. Whoa! <laughs> he says. <laughs> damn it! Stop knocking me on my ass! He screams. That's a kitty. Look at that little floofy. She's a floof. Oh, look at that floof. Look at that floof. <laughs> Elena is surrounded, but almost kind of seems to be in her element. And uh, first she's going to go for the dwarf. That's a 19. That'll play. You take a whopping eight points of damage, and then she's going to attempt to trip you. 13 does not work. Then swings around to drag, to drive her axe into the big boy. That's a hit. Oh, can I? That'll hit, yeah. Can I try and goad her into attacking me? Uh, if you had a special ability to do so, yes. 
but I don't know if you do. And also, I don't think I do. It is what it is. So no, she seems yeah. pretty focused on these two that are surrounding her. Okay. But uh, she does hit. She deals eight damage. She's going to attempt to trip you. Nineteen. Oh, that's exactly enough. Oh, she got gotcha. you. So she is going to knock you on your ass. And then she's going to five foot to here. All right. Uh, Gerton is like, shit, shit. No, 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 phone, phone, calm down. Oh, it's not working. Run for your lives. He screams. And then he is going to start running. Uh, and he's going to get to about run here. Bendel is going to attempt to stand up again. Uh, no, he's not. He hates this life. Uh, oh. Provoking okay. attacks of opportunity from the guy on the ground and the, mm -hmm. the monk cleric. It's a minus four, right? So he's correct. Back? Correct. Um, it's not possible to. Replace Does a twenty-three still hit him? Oh Jesus! So as he goes to get up, you absent like you're you're holding your claymore. You just kind of pick it up and then let gravity do the rest, and it just <laughs> chops him right in the chest. Cuts through his armor, cuts into his chest, and he just lets out a oof and promptly dies. Just just dead man. Dead Bendel. Poor Bendel. He was doing so well. He was doing so well. Not was really. he though? Not really. Was he? That was amazing. Uh you kick him in the face. His one good eye, Havala. You kick him in the face. That's really what kills him. Is okay. the face kick. Sure. From the cave. There is that. Gurgling noise again. Where is father? Where is mother? And a horrible, weird, monster, spiky demon baby comes fucking walking out of that cave. And the one thing you notice about this particular individual is that he has the most piercing gray eyes. <laughs> I knew it. Piercing gray eyes. And uh and he is and he is now in. Now I can actually name him. Now I can actually name him. This is Fawn Harden. Fawn Harden. Yes. He's yes, there is relation. And uh he's in the initiative. And the first person he sees is this gentleman right here. Which he is going to rush forward and get right up next to him. And he roars at this dwarf. He roars at you, Zoltan. Where is father? Where is father? Just growling at you in this weird, bestial, guttural voice. Tim! Tim is dead. Twang! Is dead. Twang is not dead. Twang, it's your turn. Tw Twang is looking at this and going like, what the actual fuck? What the actual fuck do, indeed? Do, do we attack it? Do <clears> we... <throat> like... Are we gonna die because we know it, it exists? I, I hate this! <laughs> I hate... I hate everything about this. <laughs> and he looks at the uh, at the woman like, But it looks like it weighs on a ton! Baron Diel, what? A Baron Diel's from the ground. <laughs> <laughs> We drape a cloak over him. He's a, he's a uh, goddamn poacher. I I think he'll be recognized by his father. Yeah, but the father's not gonna want to acknowledge him, so he's a poacher. We've now and we done it. We did the father a favor. Oh, we're so gonna die. <laughs> we're so gonna die. <laughs> and in that existential crisis. He does not take an action. Oh, I like that. I like that. Zoltan. He's like, here. on his knees going like, no, 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 I'm, no what I'm do I do? Die. I hate this. I hate everything. Oh, God. I should listen oh, to my God. parents. You, you couldn't have shot the curtain. No, Baron does not say any of that. <laughs> Baron is like, uh, we're good. All right, so are we killing him or not? Well... <laughs> He just keeps keeps roaring. <laughs> yeah, kill it. Okay, I'm working on it. No, on. don't don't kill it. No, <laughs> we're here to protect it. 
Uh, we're not, we're not to here to protect here. anything. All right. That's definitely not going to happen. He, did, he okay. didn't tell you to protect his deer. His name, no, creature's no, no, no. name is he, Fawn. He, oh. He sent us to get poachers, right? Right? Yeah, this guy and, could be a poacher. Maybe he's eating the deer. But he's not. <sighs> he's clearly the king's son. Of progeny yeah. of some sort. I hate this. <laughs> I have an intelligence right. of 10. I'm Baron gonna is cast... like we could we could throw a cloak over him and he'll wait for it. so much gold. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I like that. That's his solution to everything. It's just throw a cloak over it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, all right. I'm gonna cast blistering invective. Ah, oh, fuck me. That's awesome. I'm gonna make fun of him until he catches on fire. He doesn't <laughs> like that. Um. Hey, buddy, next I wear a shirt. All right, so I make an intimidate check. Hmm, that's not gonna play. Uh, he is still um. Hold on, what does it say? I'm having trouble continuing yeah, to do that it. voice. It's starting to hurt, but so yeah. just imagine <laughs> it's a fun one. But I, uh, I was practicing it earlier, and uh, it kind of fucked up my throat because it's like <laughs> it's tough. That's a tough one. But um, also, yes. half the time we can't oh, hear God. you. That makes but, sense. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes um, sense. I'm peeking, right? That makes sense. Zol uh, uh -huh. I will. Uh, Havala will say yell out to Zoltan, fall back. Uh, okay, I think I still have a move action, right? You yeah. do. Okay, yeah, because I got a, I got a plan for this. <laughs> As you move away, I'm... the creature fawn takes a swipe at you and calls out plaything. Calls out plaything, and he's gonna swipe. Uh -oh. Twenty-five, do it. Uh... Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, you take eight damage, and I need you to give me a fortitude save. Hmm. This is a poison, if you have resistance. Ooh. Ooh. Good news, bad news. Which do you want first? <laughs> Good news. You are beautiful as a human being and a player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bad news. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, never mind. Bad news. Bad news. Where he cut you, like he carved into your shoulder, it stings like no other. You are now sickened as tiny little thorny bony spikes start protruding from your arm. Kind of oh. similar to what you see on him. And your whole oh. arm is on it's fire. Bad. It burns. Like Oops. like a red Sorry, rash. Man. Yeah, you are sickened until further I, notice. I, I regret this. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what? Let's go back to that weird Inquisition lady. <laughs> that sounds much better. <laughs> that seemed that seem much better, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh... Better. But you can move 20 feet away if you want to. You only moved 15. Actually, 10. Yeah. <clears throat> Barat! You're on your ass. What do you want to do? Uh, yeah, I roll into this guy's viscera. Five foot roll, and then I stand up, not provoking an attack of opportunity. Give me an acrobatics check not to slip on the blood. Just kidding. Continue. <laughs> and then I look at... I, I look from her to the monster, mm -hmm. and back at her, and I go... Shall we? And then he, without even waiting for it to acknowledge, just turns so that they're sh like they could be shoulder to shoulder and positions themselves to fight the the monster. You know what? She acknowledges. She's like warrior to warrior. She's like, all right, yeah, I get it. This is where we're at. Yep, this is where we're at. So I'm gonna give her a little. I'm gonna give her a little. Uh, we're gonna give her a little fist because they're fighting the power. There you go. Yeah. Fighting the oligarchy. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Anti-monster power. <laughs> <laughs> monsters are people, too. No, they're not. They're monsters. No, they're not. They're monsters. <laughs> All right, boys. All Monster lives matter. Right. Monster lives matter. Ooh, that's too real. Uh, Havala, you were next. Ah, yes. Um, I am going to move up uh, five, ten feet. Uh, I'm going to attack defensively. You are so brave. I really appreciate you <laughs> as a human being. I know. Um, I'm going to attack defensively, so that's a neg four for a plus two to the AC, yeah? Correct. Okay, cool. Um... God bless Yo. you, Havala. You I truly are of the revelry. <laughs> <laughs> May my revels never end. Oh! oh no. uh, natural Almost 20. That is a hit. Wow. You deal him four damage as you strike him. You're not wielding a weapon. Mm -hmm. So his weird bony spikes attack back. Uh, and you take a whopping... 1d4 plus 1 damage, if I can remember. Yeah. You take 3 yeah. damage as you punch into him, and your punch sort of hits the bony spikes. Give me a fortitude save. Okay, let me detract that HP first. I'm at 21. Um, a fortitude save. Uh, 21. You're good. For now. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so attacking... not coming back to haunt us. No. Attacking defensively now. That's a it's a plus two to the AC. What? I like that. Right. Yeah, she's gonna flank around and stand in the bloody viscera of her dead friend to flank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna go for an attack. 30 will hit. Hot damn. Hot damn. Hmm. 26 plus three. You'll deal eight damage to him. And then she is going to attempt to trip. But she also gets the flanking bonus. 12 is not good enough. Garretton is screaming, No! No, you fools! It's already too late! If they've been struck, it's already too late! Flee! Flee for your lives! And Greeton will continue to run off of the map. Bendel is gurgling and dead. Fawn. Fawn Harden. Fawn Harden is just roaring screaming out at the sky and as he does so he roars all of his bone spikes kind of suck in and then shoot out of him like a weird porcupine explosion oh, and I, hate that. I need i hate that for all of us everyone to give me reflex saves Ooh, i get to use a face oh my god everyone everyone 12 not good enough. Nope. That, that seven is going to hurt me forever. It's so fucking it's not sad. Can I wow. Something good wow. Wow. Just attack. All right. Uh, everyone. And let me let me have her roll a check too. Uh, she has a plus six. Ah, Helena's Helene is okay. Uh, everyone takes seven damage. I need everyone to give me a fortitude save, please. Except uh, for Zoltan, who is already infected. Bran's good. Twang uh, is not good. How much damage good. did you say? Seven? Seven. Twang is not good. Havala is good. Twang, uh, roll me a d8. Oh, God. Hey, you so much. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Your left leg takes a spike to it, and instantaneously it starts to burn. You are now moving at half speed, and your entire leg has become this weird, bony, spiky, porcupine-like thing. Uh, it doesn't feel good. It's probably nothing. You can just doesn't... Walk, you can walk it off at half speed. The one thing I thought it was going to do... Punch! <laughs> it doesn't. <sighs> Twang, it's your turn. Twang is like, the fuck is this? The fuck is, what is going on? <laughs> what is happening? What the literal godfall is fucking happening? Ranger, shoot the monster. Shoot the monster with your arrows. <laughs> As he hobbles a bit forward to get a better line of sight, he will then shoot the monster. <sighs> 
Brian, I'm so glad you did this. I'm having... I don't know if you understand how much fun I'm having right now. Oh, good. I'm glad, because me too. <laughs> you guys are amazing. Um, this is a great party. Those sorry, are both hits. Those are both hits. Uh, that is seven and five damage to the creature, and he's just... Rah! Roaring and screaming for father. Where is the Faja? Where is the Faja? <laughs> Uh, that's a beautiful twang. Uh, Zoltan. Die, you monster! <laughs> Die, you monster! <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Mm. Alright. Um... You know who else isn't a monster? Aww. This kitty. This kitty. <laughs> this kitty. Oh. Oh, this kitty true. putting your butt in your face. Yeah. It's <laughs> so cute. Oh, she doesn't want to. <laughs> she doesn't want to be. Yes. No. <laughs> he wants to stare at me from in front of my computer screens, but doesn't want yep. to be held or touched right She's now. She's like, please, father. Please, please father. Please acknowledge father. me with your presence. Uh, uh, which of you some... two would rather get uh, Cure Light Wounds? I give it to... Uh, I have more hit points than the... Yeah, I'm I'm trying the to monk. take some hits so I can uh keep them on the floor. Okay. Uh D eight plus four. Six. Awesome. Love that. Very cool. I love 20. that for you. Sultan, okay. you were a good brother. Farron is like, yes! Glorious combat! <laughs> there once was a soldier came to the forest. I mean, Bought the monster and killed him dead. Look away, look away. Don't get hit by the spikes today. <laughs> I'm dying right now, deep inside, in a good way. All right, Ferrand, you're up next. Uh, so I pull out the spike that is just lodged in my armor mm -hmm. and has pierced me somewhat, but not much. Pull it out, throw it to the ground, heft my weapon, take a five foot step forward. Make Monster, today you die trick. at the hands of Boulder Shade, and then have you make an acrobatics probably... check not to acrobatics. fall in blood? Just kidding. <laughs> like what? Slip, thud, crack. Oh come Damn. on! Oh, that would have been great. You swing down and you cut through a couple of the spikes, which instantaneously regrow. It was a cool swing, though. Thank you. Oh, that Avala. You're up next. Mm. Yes. Um... Where is Father? Uh, I would like to do Flurry of Blows. Yes. Uh, first one is going to be a trip maneuver. I love that journey for you. Yes. Fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, no. That is a fail. I'll do it again. However... <laughs> Because you struck him, you just failed. You take a d4 plus... You take an additional four damage, and I need you to make a fortitude save. Okay, I'm at... Uh, the second one's going to succeed. 16. Defense is fort safe. 17. Oh, <laughs> that smile. That so as you swing smile. with your leg, your leg gets pierced by one of the spikes... You take an additional, additional two points of damage, mm -hmm. and you are now moving at half speed as your right leg is completely covered in bony spikes. Okay. No, but 27? That is a trip. He is on yep. his ass. Yeah. I'll, um, like, flick his hand out the way, uh, go into his space, and, like, push him down. Judo style. Good. Um, That's probably going to help. Yeah. That's what I was going for. Um, that'll be it for me. Uh, can I see if he is like, like, would he be affected by healing? Like, could I channel without selective and then not heal him because he's like a demon or something? You have I don't no know how Pathfinder works. This fucking thing okay, is. sure. Not a fucking clue. Yeah, I, I reckon. Do you have knowledge, fucking weird shit. 
No. Uh, knowledge knowledge of religion. It's what it would be. Knowledge of planes or religion or arcana. Any it's, of a class, it's a class. It's a class. I have all of this. Roll which one you want to roll. I'll flavor it accordingly. Um. Let's see. Skills. Which knowledges did you say? Arcana. Religion. Uh-huh. Religion. Or planes. Or planes. Uh, I'll do knowledge religion. Twenty. You're not sure. Both of us. You're not sure. Damn. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll be it for me. All right. Next up is Helena, who is going to double swing. Is absolutely carrying this party. <laughs> Twenty nine is a hit. Nineteen is a miss. Is that plus the four for him yeah. being prone? Five damage. So a 20. Him. Yeah, all right. Okay. He's roaring. Vaughn is going to swing from the ground. Uh, his first his first attack's going to be on her, because he really doesn't like her. Uh, he is swinging at a minus four. Fuck. That's a possible crit. Uh-oh. Damn. It's not a confirmed crit. She only takes... Four, five, six, seven, seven damage. Oh, not he crits good, on a 19. But you're not good. Yeah, he does have a 19 to 20. Uh, she's going to make a quick fortitude save. Oh, strikes her in the leg. Now she's moving at half speed and takes an additional 1d6. 1d6 plus 6. 11 damage. She's not looking good. He's going to swing on her again with a second claw attack. 18 is also a hit. Oh no. Nine damage uh, as he takes his like fist, which is now covered in bone spikes, and just punches Wait. her up through her gut, probably into her heart. And she oh. just goes limp and he draws it back, swinging his uh, head around towards Havala. Go ahead. Don't unarmed attacks provoke attacks of opportunity? Not if they're natural attacks, if these are natural oh, okay. attacks for him. Okay, because he's, he's a monster. Not he's now going to attempt to gore you uh, with his horns. Yeah. So that's cool. Okay. I'll do a redirection. 15 is a miss. He is missing. Okay. I'll redirect. Um, I'll uh, attempt to reposition him. Like he's that. not one size bigger than me, right? He is not. Okay. Are you sure you want to touch him? Uh, Yeah, I'll, it's fine. I love um, that journey for you. <laughs> We're gonna die anyway, so you know. Nineteen. That is not good enough. Uh, doesn't. Is this any higher or lower because he's on the ground? No. Same. No. Okay. You know All what? Right. I'm gonna give this to you. Where do you want to yeah. move him? Fuck it. Um, yeah, I'll give you a plus four. Fuck it. Can I move him out of the way? Like, how far can I throw him? You can move him something? five feet to any square that he is adjacent to, and it's adjacent to you. you can go okay. here, here, or here. Um, out of character, uh, uh, Bri, would you be able to make more attacks if he's in front of you? Like, you doesn't matter. No, no, okay. Um, <clears throat> I will just, um, in a display of great strength, uh, get into his space, grab him by like the under the nuts and like the leg, and like toss him to the left of Helena. I absolutely. Just absolutely yeeting him. Like this? Uh, no, to the left, uh, next to Elena. Helena. Has to be in a square that both you and him are adjacent to. Oh, oh, you... Uh, okay, so I'll put here, him right here. right here. Right here? Perfect. Done. Yeah. All right, you take an additional nine points of damage. Nice. Good lord. Uh, you are. I'm at five. You're not in a great spot. Uh, Twang, it's your turn. No, you're at seven. 16 minus nine is seven. I was not, I didn't update that. Uh, wait, uh, everyone, uh, wait, hold on. No, 16? Yeah? Okay. My, this, is, this is very complicated. I, yes. I stumbled one, one, one square with my, my feet and you looking can move, down. You can move up to 15. You're just moving. I know, I know, feet. I know. I'm, but I'm you're, not, playing, not, you're playing it up. I like that. I, I, I play it up. Um, while uh, knocking and, and 
one singular arrow overly dramatically just shooting one <laughs> arrow like <laughs> this is not the time for dramatics ranger i think it is actually actually you know what farron absolutely does not notice he is absolutely a sucker for dramatics. that is a hit for 11. solid blow solid blow zoltan you're up next uh um could i have i guess stepped as well it's uh another cure light for you there buddy what? you don't like him to have his guts uh, all strewn about the floor <laughs> that's better all the cool that's kids are doing better. it uh nine to me yeah okay i got a 16 again um, would I have been able to just do a five foot step here? I forgot that I had yes. movement. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Yes! It is just me and the monster! As was foretold. <laughs> I don't like seeing arrows below me. Is it my turn? It is indeed. Yeah. Because he didn't move the uh, uh, Farron's tracker forward. But you want green Boulder Shade. Well, My name is Farron Boulder Shade Three Ash, descendant of the Three Ash family. And you shall find that this day is the day that you meet your maker. Oh! 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 Oh my God! Shut the Shit. fuck up! Shut the fuck Whoa. up! Double crit! All right, you know what, Bri Bri, that is too goddamn perfect. As you have your claymore up and bring it crashing down and sever this creature's oh. head from its body as it just goes inert. As that happens. <laughs> Arant, as that happens, you look down at your hands, you see your, your gauntlets, you see the blood dripping from the end of your claymore, you feel something scratchy, You're just a little bit scratchy on your neck. Oh no! And as you go, you, you pull a little tiny prick of a little tiny little bone needle and mm -hmm. drop it. And our last scene of this adventure is going to be perhaps you turning oh. full of glorious success in combat. But what everyone doesn't see are tiny little bone spikes starting to come out of the back of your neck. All of the rest of them, tiny little bone spikes starting to come out. And as the camera pans back and away from our adventuring party, we hear guttural grunting in the sounds and the voices of all of you. And each of them are saying, Father, where <laughs> is Father? And that, my friends, is the end of our adventure, the fawn of the Whitewood. Hope you guys had fun. That was good. And that was ridiculous I... <laughs> absolutely fantastic killing blow absolutely fantastic I can't I I double crit That's that ridiculous. was i couldn't take that away from you double crit is an insta gib it's gotta be it's gotta be insta gib in that moment the guy would have had like five hp left i was like i'm not taking yeah. this away from you that's too fucking good yeah. uh absolutely fantastic but always say at the event of recession any final thoughts questions comments or concerns from the players before we get ready to wrap up Day's crazy wow, that was great Zany adventure. Yeah. I had a great time. Uh, Bri Bri, the server mod guy, good friend of mine, one of the OGs. So I want to say thanks, man, for doing the point redeem. This turned out a lot more fun. There's a bunch of stuff in here that is now canon in the set setting. Um, I kind of made those hook axes up on the fly because they seemed cool. That was good. I was like, I like that. That's a neat That's a neat weapon. That'll be like a custom homebrew weapon. Maybe a little OP to get a free trip attempt with every attack, but... You know, it's uh, but only if the attack hits. So only if the attack hits, and it's at a minus two on the CMB, a CMB check. So, but as uh, as always, thank you every session. Thank you so much to the players for playing. Seriously, without you guys, this is impossible, and this was a hell of a lot of fun. Thank you to the viewers for viewing. The chat was pretty crazy. Crimson, want to say thanks for stopping around, man. Hope your Korean barbecue was delicious. 
And uh, happy gaming, everybody. I There's will see. Korean barbecue. I know it's only second. Will... Apparently, we have to fight his dog, and I, I just don't want to do that. I will see everyone back here on Sunday evening. Uh, both Saturday streams are off this week. Uh, some players are out of town, but uh, be well, be safe, and again, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.